University of Allahabad. He has visited several countries like France, Russia, China, Belgium uh, for academic purposes. Dr. Siddiqui is a member of Academic Council, Rajarsi Kandan University and Professor Rajendra Singh Rajuhaya University, UP. He is holding the post of Secretary General, Indian Institute of Geomorphologist, IGI, since 2016. He is specialized in arid land ecology, droughts, desertification, and dry land issues using geospatial technologies. I hope that uh, this national workshop uh, will be an enriching experience for all of us and it would help us to enlarge our vision on contemporary research on space technology. Once again, I sincerely welcome all the academicians, research scholars, and students to this DSTSERV sponsored one day workshop on drought monitoring and early warning through geospatial techniques. Now, I request Dr. Patel uh, to deliver his speech. Over Thank to Dr. Patel, sir. Let me okay for share things, okay, whether my gravity is there. And we all are a student of Professor Patel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but now, now you are not student, you are now okay. Well, uh, no, no, no. Faculty. We are always your student, sir. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. But okay, because now we have attained certain age, so very difficult for us uh, to certain thing, okay, like online mode. <laughs> Yeah, how to do yaar yeah, i don't know sharing sharing okay can can yes, you share yes, yes you must share your screen where where okay it will come right hand uh, side bottom now huh? click on present now present, present now. now okay yes i uh, present now okay then your entire screen okay entire screen okay then My click your PPT. PPT, it is not showing whether I open. Yeah. Select a window. Window. Select. Okay. Yes. From present now, select a window. Then. Okay. Now, now I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. it is coming. Coming. Okay, okay. So it is uh, okay. Yes. So uh, now I am uh, first slide mode. Okay now visible. Yes, it is visible. Okay, okay. So good morning, dear participant. Good morning. It is really a pleasure for me to have interaction with uh, some students as well as some researcher from Vidyasagar University and particularly my student, student, student of my student. <laughs> so I feel great. I'm like a feeling like a grandfather. <laughs> so here, okay, we'll start why we need to monitor drought and why we need to have a in place drought warning system. Okay. Oh, this is a sorry, sorry, sorry. This is okay. One thing, okay, let me see. Oh. Sorry me for a little bit of interruption. It's okay, sir. Because yeah, that's uh, some other slide is open. I have so many lectures on drought. Let me see where it is. Yes, yes. Yes, it is coming, sir. No, no, I am just uh, seeing another lecture because this is an older, older one. Yesterday I revised. Okay. It is also an older one. Because I'll see just. Yesterday I changed where I saved.
Yeah. Yeah. Now this is now you can see drought monitoring and early warning system. Yes, it is visible. Uh, it is a drought monitoring early warning system or condition. A uh, drought monitoring and early warning system using okay. technology. It is visible, sir. Okay, okay. So, why we need to have a drought monitoring and early warning system, particularly in country like India, which is mainly located in the monsoon Asia. So, let us okay understand why we need a disaster warning because India is placing in the monsoon Asia. It's subject to variety kind of nature of calamity and the disaster. Ranging from drought, earthquake, tsunami, cyclone, flood, landslide, so many. Out of all those disasters, why drought has got unique importance? Because drought has a kind of hazard, which is a slow poison, creeping hazard, and develops cumulatively by the time you can see on the ground it becomes too late for the people to take any action. So it is a long, slow poison and long lasting hazard. Affect more than 50% of people who are affected because of different kind of disaster. So yes, like okay, landslide, cyclone or flood, they directly affect lives and property. But drought is a kind of hazard that will paralyze the whole nation. So we need to take drought in a different context that it is a long lasting hazard and its effect will be there for a decade. So in India particularly, we are in the subtropical region. So our majority of land mass is in arid and semi-arid region. Arid, semi-arid, sub-humid. Almost 68% of our land is subject to drought highly vulnerable to drought. That is mainly arid, semi-arid and this. So it is not only the Western India. Nowadays, even the Haryana, Punjab, Bundelkhan region, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, quite often subject to the drought. So how drought is significant with respect to the Indian economy and also rural economy? Because in India, we have vast Landmass 329 million hectare. Out of this, almost 155 million hectare land is under agriculture. So, when your half of the land is under agriculture, so only cultivated land, or I can say, drought follows plow. Wherever more cultivated land is there, they are more subject to the drought. And drought affect in a different way. In agriculture, drying of lands, crack development, unemployment, less availability of fodder for cattle, and finally, there is a starvation in the cattle, then food or food store, food, fodder shortage. And also, you'll find particularly people who are hailing from okay, uh, Western India, like me, Gujarat and Rajasthan. We find quite often this kind of scenario that our uh, women has to travel almost four or five kilometers to fetch a glass, one gala of water. One ball, uh, this. So this kind of thing, okay, quite many times it happens whenever there is a drought heat. <coughs> they have to travel long distance and further in search of drinking water. So overall effect of drought is a uh, multidimensional or multifaceted. And finally, it is causing the complete abandonment of the geographic region. So if you see the drought pond area mainly, you will find this drought pond area mainly you will find in the Western India. But nowadays it is Karnataka, also Tamil Nadu. They are also quite often subject to the drought and Bundelkhand. So drought is not simply, you can say, it occur in any part. It is a one of the most fearful natural calamity that affect irrespective of the regional boundary, religious boundary, or political boundary. It affects Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and India too. And it is one of the most disaster which, or hazard which has been declared by United Nations because it affects more than 45% of the people due to different disasters. But as I say, 
its effect is multi dimensional it causes famine it suffer women suffering and complete devastation of the region why because in night, uh, late 60s and early 70s we have received okay, green revolution green revolution has caused quantum jump in the production but this all for uh, increase in the production being cancel out or gain is being cancel out due to frequent occurrence of drought in india so drought is a kind of uh, hazard which cancel out or can can diminish the technological effort today okay technologies or agriculture communities uh, scientific communities doing large effort to develop varieties which are highly drought tolerant but even though are those technology effort being gone if we do not have drought monitoring or drought uh, early warning technique in place to warn the farmer or to warn the people about this devastating effect so far if we have this kind of monitoring in our large region then it would be a very much useful for the planner as well as local pe rural people so you will see this kind of situation also in rajasthan okay this is okay people are not at well for water but they are at hell so more than okay 200 300 people are there to get waiting for their turn to get water so this kind of situation always will find whenever there is a drought so drought definition point of view if we go it is simply a water scarcity physical water scarcity when we see there is there is a water scarcity because of imbalance between the demand and supply in any region then you can say there is a drought whether it is a hydrological drought agriculture or yeah hello yeah okay so drought for mainly caused by the imbalance between the evaporative demand and the supply through rainfall it is not but sometimes you may be knowing there is a some disturbance in the sea surface surface atmospheric circulation which is called inso el nino southern insolation insolation uh, oscillation because of this uh, inso phenomena sometimes it cause drought so whenever there is a inso you can expect drought if there is a la nina phenomena then you can expect flood kind of event so let us okay you understand okay what are the different kind of drought mainly meteorological drought it is a relative degree of dryness so when rainfall is less than climatologically expected rainfall in a any region you can say it is a meteorological drought then there is a also agriculture drought when crops <coughs> come into picture so whenever there is a inadequacy of soil moisture in the root zone to meet the water requirement of crops then it is a agriculture drought then hydrological drought is there so wherever you find there is a drying of the lakes pond reservoir means surface and sub surface water resources ground water decline then you can say it is a hydrological drought then there is a also socio economic drought when the uh, recreational facility or economic services are in short to comparison to the demand then you can say it is a socio economic drought so whenever there is recreational facility tourism activity reduce or landscaping reduce water availability in hotels all not available all those are ranging uh, ranging uh, by the uh, this ranger is also reduced these are the activity which mainly gives you information about socio economic drought so meteorological drought mainly done by the uh, characterized by the meteorological element like temperature vapor pressure deficit cloud cover but uh, when you talk about the agriculture drought leaf area index and relative soil moisture come into picture and so soil factor and also vegetation for type of vegetation type of crop that also matter when you talking about the agriculture drought so historically if you see there are several drought right from okay this uh, current century if you see 2001 onwards so most worst drought was it was 2002 followed by 2009 then okay 2050 so these were the different kind of drought condition 
but 2017 also it was drought but moderate drought 2008 was above normal so in indian history if you see the worst drought hit is in 1987 when almost 441 district were affected because of drought second drought worst it was uh, worst hit is a 2002 year which is the again almost 20% reduction in the food grain production and 25% reduction in the rainfall anomaly characteristic of uh, drought is what different one was a early drought another is 2002 was a mid season drought but finally these are the two which are the worst mode drought hit which is affected india largely so if we go to talk about certain monitoring methods conventional approaches imd uses percentile approach that means percent if climatologically expected rainfall rainfall in any region is less than 75% of long term value then you can say it is a slight drought if this rainfall deficit is 26 to 50% you may say that it is a moderate drought if this deficit is more than 50% then it is a normal drought this is a standard criteria which is being adopted by the imd based on simply only rainfall but if you have some information about okay temperature and other things you can implement uh, drought monitoring by the aridity index what imd does because imd is a nodal agency i can tell you no imd is a nodal agency which has got the uh, mandate to forecast weather give forecast about drought also monitor drought at sub divisional level at the same time they are doing okay with the meteorological drought but if you want to do agriculture drought then there is a uh, agency drought monitoring uh, in uh, imd together with the maharnobis national crop forecast center which uses based uh, technology for drought monitoring so here aridity anomaly if you see that require okay mainly potential evapotranspiration actual evapotranspiration so potential evapotranspiration that is based on thorn fed method you can compute then actual evapotranspiration that is as a part of water balance technique so once you run water balance with the available water capacity design you can get actual evapotranspiration based on water bookkeeping procedure then aridity anomaly you can classify into different drought class so this is a method which is being employed operationally by imd for drought monitoring but nowadays they have also switched over to the newer indices like standardized precipitation index so new indexes are there palmer drought severity index standardized precipitation index so standardized precipitation index is more suitable for indian condition why but palmer drought severity index is suitable for the usa and they, it is good for only short term indicator the standard spi that is suitable for india why because india we have in very good network of the rain gauge station every revenue block or block level you will, you will find one revenue gauge station rain gauge station so we are having more than 7000 revenue gauge station where okay we can we are able to measure rainfall but we do not have Uh, observatory where okay temperature information is measured temperature is measured hardly we are having 500 observatory so we cannot apply that palmer dot cvit index which require temperature as well as rainfall so we more much more rely on the uh, standardized precipitation index second thing is that this index uh, is a such a index which can able to simulate or identify dry and wet spell at different multiple time scale One month, three months, six up to forty-eight month time scale. So it is better suited if one to three months is good for agriculture drought. Then okay for six to uh, ten, twelve month that is good for okay hydrological drought or precipitation pattern. So different uses are there. That is why it is widely accepted in Asia. But another index that is a crop moisture index, which is one of the best index if you really want to monitor agriculture drought. you know on a short term basis or weekly basis 
because we can compute this based on the deviation between the actual and climatologically expected evapotranspiration. That why it is more useful because any index which is closely related with evapotranspiration is ideal index for the agriculture plot monitoring because the agricultural deficit, soil moisture deficit, that is mainly controlled by the evapotranspiration variation. That is why it gives better reflection about the requirement of the water by the crops. So standardized precipitation index, it is simply like a jet score. It can be calculated at different time scale. So this all, I'm not going into detail, but positively in SPI mainly indicate more precipitation or uh, normal, normal condition. If negative values are there, then you can say it is a drought situation. So this we have applied also, you can see here, for Gujarat, three month SPI, that SPI 1982, 1987, 1988, and 1997. So 1982 was a normal, almost a slight drop. So SPI is ranging between 0 to minus 1 for all 160 stations. Next is a sub, uh, 1987. As I said, it was the uh, yeah, severe most or worst drought heat in India. So in Gujarat, it is you are seeing that most of the stations are recording values below minus one, up to minus three also. So this is the most severe drought year. So why this is this was the severe most drought year because it was triggered by the El Nino phenomena. So whenever there is a El Nino is there, you will always expect the drought. But at the same time, I can tell you that El Nino cannot last for more than two years. So one, uh, once El Nino phenomena is over, you can always expect there will be a La Nina phenomena. So same pattern or same uh, event were noticed in 1988, that was a La Nina phenomena, followed by the 1987 El Nino. So 1988, here you are seeing that all stations recorded above 1, above 0.5 rainfall, up to even 2.5. So it was like a flood-like situation next year. Then 1997, that was a almost normal. So using this standardized precipitation index, you can categorize what year, generate partial pattern, then categorize okay any year or any season as a drought, whether it is a drought or not, uh, very well you can capture at different time scale. So this is what you can say based on the geospatial technique, the geostatistically interpolated the SPI value. You see August, September, October, all yellow. That means negative SPI. So 1987, all months were under drought, almost severe drought. But similarly, same month in 1988, all were above uh, mean annual rainfall. So all were above average. So it was much like much above normal rainfall. So if you with the in situ measurement, if you use you along with the geospatial technique, you can generate a map and integrate that with the satellite imagery also. So this is what about the actual agriculture broad assessment. Conventionally, we are doing okay rainfall deviation. We are measuring uh, by visually crop zone area deviation, reservoir level changes, manual observation, all are. So all those deficit rainfall, soil moisture, all those are the traditional technique, which gives you a different cover, reduced zone area, poor germination, loss of crop yield, all by visual distinction or visual observation by the patwari or gram -shaver. Then accordingly, drought were declared. Mainly, most of the uh, area, drought were declared based on the rainfall only. Based on the rainfall deviation or certain observation on the ground about the crop zone area. Then drought were declared. But nowadays, because this all conventional approach is not that good because best observation are there, as I said, we don't have enough number of observatory for measuring drought aridity index. Then also you can see, okay, these are the manual observation, so they subject to error, Con inconsistent also. And apart from all those things, these are the observation not available in time. Suppose drought is there, if you go and uh, take observation, this okay, we have observer will observe and then he will prepare diary, then we will send to IMD. You may, if you request, you will get after two months all this observation or measurement for drought monitoring. So real-time drought monitoring, monitoring works 
very much questionable where there was no computer processing or computer facility is there. Nowadays, with computer power and computer facility, along with the satellite imagery availability, all can be done in a real time mode. So we need to monitor drought in a real time basis by integrated information from the weather observation or weather related information along with the satellite imagery, which is available nowadays on a daily basis. So integrating remotely sensed images along with the weather information, we can generate real time drought map on a regional and national scale. So here you only try to understand, okay, one slide that, okay, how we detect the drop with the satellite remote sensing. Because if the physical mechanism is there, once, okay, any waiting event is occur, rainfall occur, it occurs on the ground. Once it implies on the ground, it is penetrating to the soil. Then that rainfall, okay, once it penetrates into soil, it is percolated into the soil and it will lead to the recharging of the soil water root zone. Some rainfall lost as a overland flow, as a runoff. The once that root, uh, this uh, root zone recharges, this water is taken up by the root and it transferred from xylem to the stomach uh, leaves. Once it reaches to the uh, leaves, then from leaves through stomatal cavity, uh, cavity it uh, transpire to the atmosphere. So one molecule of CO2 exists. So one molecule of CO2 get fixed through photosynthesis. Once this photosynthesis process start, then new dry matter will produce. New dry matter produce, then new leaves and new growth will take place. Once this new changes in the leaf area index or uh, increase in the leaf growth, then only it can be detected by the satellite remote sensor. So here, what I want to say that your rainfall occur just two or three weeks back, but it is detected by on the ground by the satellite remote sensing through optical sensor by after only two or three weeks. That is why vegetation index, whether it we can use normalized different vegetation index, that has got little, it is a widely used index for the drought monitoring, but it has got time lag with respect to the detection of the drought by two to three weeks. So with the vegetation index is okay, by exploiting electromagnetic radiation, visible rate range, near infrared range, and the short wave infrared band, you can construct different kind of indices. One common use commonly is a normalized different vegetation index, other is the short wave infrared index, normalized different water index. So many index are there which can be constructed to detect the dot. So not only this okay, optical sensor also, but when we talk about the uh, drought, there are even, even these uh, geostationary orbit data like, okay, insect 3D, even uh, Megatropics was there, Kalpana VHR, all are useful for computing PET or NDA, NDA you can get, also you can get uh, potential evapotranspiration, wind speed, all meteorological parameter you can compute. Also, there are okay Leo orbit like okay certain satellite also passive microwave also there the laser satellites are there so all those Doppler weather radar ground based sensor and AWS so here air uh, automatic weather observatory ground sensor Doppler weather radar even geostationary satellite based meteorological uh, measurement uh, for Leo orbit derived or crop condition or other uh, soil moisture related information. All you can integrate to derive information for the drought. And also, if you use this all information to certain extent with a certain kind of climate model or numerical weather model, you can develop an early warning system also. So, which are the data mainly being used for the drought monitoring? One is NOAA HR. Teramur is no HR, that is mainly for the India, whole India. If you are monitoring, then you can use no HR or Teramodis. If your interest is uh, for okay, one B state, then you may use reach data, OCM data, or IRS uh, P6 advanced data for state level agriculture dot monitoring. 
all this satellite has got nowadays data is available you can monitor on a weekly basis agriculture dot using mainly the vegetation impact, dot impacted vegetation using this all sort of data so i am not going into detail about different indices but normalized different vegetation index that is a very much widely used and constructed from the near infrared and the red visible wavelength mainly red it is a nir minus r divided by nir plus r so but it has got some problem with respect to the time lag another index is a short wave infrared wave that is very good particularly for detecting short term fluctuation but all those are only specific to the particular mo uh, so, so soil moisture monitoring all those things it doesn't take into account the geographical dependence of the uh, so sensitivity or geographical sensitivity of the vegetation type to the drought stress so we should use certain index which standardize the uh, over the long term 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 period like standardized precipitation index we should use vegetation condition index we standardize the any uh, sensitivity specific, vegetation specific sensitivity for comparing different kind of region for to susceptible to the drought then another index is also there vegetation temperature condition index okay vegetation temperature condition index which integrate both vegetation index and the surface temperature in a trapezoid manner so once you construct trapezoid lst against ndvi you will find negative relationship this negative relationship is exploited to estimate evapore transpiration soil moisture as well as water stress so this is a one of the good but problem with this kind of index is that because it is requiring thermal infrared range land surface temperature and hardly you will find land surface temperature data correctly particularly in the july and august because thermal infrared range highly uh, sensitive or affected by the clouds so you won't get data so now standardized drought operational drought assessment here okay you can do crop condition assessment soil moisture crop zone area as already i said so this is what weather data soil moisture crop zone area and crop condition integrate for drought severity and the drought declaration this is what india follows in the national agriculture drought assessment and monitoring system where we use no hr indices terra modis msr soil moisture insa ccd for different purpose all are integrated to derive drought mild or slight and moderate drought at the district level even sasi sasi means slope senescence index which is useful for the determining the soil suitability so msr is the soil moisture ocm ndi advanced use ndi all data integrated along with the rainfall anomaly to get the drought signature so here you see what we are giving okay normal watch and alert about the june july every month warning and this bulletin about normal watch and alert for every district is given to the almost 13 state by the under the nagmas by the isro so agriculture here okay all information related deviation rainfall vci in season transformation all those information integrated to derive drought early warning So you see, this is one okay. How okay? Different district call categorized into different kind of drought, normal and mild drought, and severe drought. Then okay, this is all monthly. It is monitor, and how it is integrated with the ground data, with the sowing progress. Okay, how where sowing is going on based on the SASI index accordingly, and also particularly in state like Andhra Pradesh and Haryana, where drought is monitor even sub level, district level, like block level, with the advanced risk data. so some study i'll show you okay like a vci tci and vt that can be useful for the monitoring crop health so here you see vegetation health by integrating vegetation condition index and temperature condition index you can derive vegetation health product so on daily basis also you can it can be possible with the no hr kind of satellite data nowadays we are getting sentinel 3 Land surface temperature one kilometer also NDVI Sentinel three so you can use Sentinel three also but 
you you have to wait for certain period of time like 10 15 years because all these require historical nda and lst information so as on today you can construct vegetation health order on the modi's data and no hr data so two, 2002 here you see yeah, as i said it is the worst dot all red patches that shows the area under drought particularly on july 21 the same in the previous year 2001 no drought was there and then in august also this august also it was under drought but same place in the previous year the indo gangetic plain or western india there it was not under drought so 1987 you see here because i want to show okay how this remote sensing because for drought monitoring it has been used since long time because first of all no hr has place in the orbit and no HR, no HR satellite has made revolution with respect to the monitoring of drought. So this is all no HR historical VC, NDI anomaly index from, uh, calibrated with the MODIS data. So you see more no area, almost 442 districts in different months from July to almost November. All months where you are seeing under drought in 1987. So 2002-2003, here you see also Rajasthan, mainly 2002, all months were under drought, severe drought. 2000 only, the first two months, 2000, but 2003, it is almost normal, all blue. And you also you can link it with the production. You see 2002, 20% reduction in the food gain production was there because of drought. And this also kind of seasonal vegetation anomaly can be also used as a signal for the crop departure. Here you see, we, we, we could relate these three seasonal vegetation anomaly, integrated seasonal vegetation anomaly directly related with the three month SPI. And so this seasonal vegetation anomaly also can able to detect any departure in the food gain. That means food gain yield anomaly. Whenever there is a drought, food gain anomaly is negative, when it is a normal condition, it is a probo positive. So this kind of satellite derived vegetation indicator can use as an indicator of the crop loss well in advance if you integrate over a season. Also, as I said earlier, vegetation temperature condition index means condition VTCI. You, by developing this kind of trapezoid, you can develop vegetation temperature condition in there. So this can be useful for the drought monitoring. This is also one of my students like okay, Dipandita. They have done okay in 2005. So 2000, you see 2002, majority, majority you are seeing that 2002, that is a more number of drought were there. All brownies. Drought duration is more than okay, four to five. Feet. But 2004, three, almost normal and we could also see that is a dot duration has increased in Gujarat. Groundnut yield is declining. So based on the satellite derived dot duration or satellite derived VTCI that can able to capture any reduction in the groundnut yield due to drought. So it is drought is not only evaluated with respect to the uh, rainfall. If I know, uh, we are talking about agriculture drought, we need to assess how it is affecting the crop performance, how it is affecting the soil moisture. So we supposed to make use of a kind of index which is highly related to evapotranspiration, soil moisture, and also can give you information about the crop loss. So here also okay, another index was the water requirement satisfaction index. Uh, here also you can monitor okay, in eastern Rajasthan where we have we applied some phenological inventories. We could monitor phenology also. So 2002 you see length of growing season has declined largely. And this phenological length of growing season along with the rainfall data and available water capacity you can derive water requirement satisfaction index by running soil water balance model for every week. Then you can derive that water WRSC as a crop failure, good crop, bad crop, 
for different crop so gum formulate and maize so water requirement satisfaction index is nowadays one of the best index which can be useful for the as indicator of broad early warning and food security it is largely implemented by the food and agriculture organization so nowadays everybody is to moving towards geo partial accounting of water and that is done only with the, the water requirement satisfaction index supplemented with the satellite observation so vci also in the saurashtra in rajasthan this is one study also you can see all red that is stress condition in 2002 2003 all green that means no drought and it is related with the crop moisture index similarly eastern rajasthan also all 2002 drought here is there is a no drought then also because this all we have uh, seen only the single single index but nowadays there is a concept of integrating different indices to better capture the drought so here you see we have integrated derived index uh, rainfall in, uh, index weighted time weighted rainfall index modified rainfall anomaly index and vegetation condition index combined to derive partial vegetation drought index which can be better giving the correlation with the oil seed and food gain anomaly compared to single vci or mri so we can better forecast the crop loss with the this kind of integrated index because only it is not if you are using only satellite based then what will happen it is only more sensitive to biomass we cannot capture correct information about this drought effect on the crop yield economic part of the agriculture produce so if you want to take its effect on economic part of the agriculture produce we need to have a integrated index both from okay either from remote sensing along with the meteorological data so we talk also about global scenario that us uses also farmer drought index spi stream flow and satellite vegetation health product for drought monitoring similarly they have also developed one good index that is vegetation drought response index now why i am emphasizing this because here okay if you use okay like integrated index satellite based parameter along with the some meteorological climate component spi or rainfall anomaly index but even though it may not capture the complete picture about the drought because there certain farmers or certain people having a good irrigation infrastructure they may be having a water pond they may be having a different kind of crops or soil may be different topography may be different so all those parameters so biophysical component the land cover ecological condition soil uh, irrigation facilities soil all affect the drought so if we integrate along with the climate the satellite imagery along with that biophysical component and socio economic condition then we can better categorize the drought or characterize the drought with the vegetation dry uh, drought response index which is developed by the usa now we will come to the monitoring early warning system so there are several early warning system being practiced uh, in place across global and regional so one of the best is a famine early warning system that is global uh, available so which uses mainly the wrc then we are having also mars for the europe region monitoring agriculture with remote sensing then of india there is a fasal program in nadmas so where we more, uh, give uh, information about crop production forecast any deviation and also the drought condition so if we want to construct crop specific drought warning what is the requirement first we need to have a drought monitoring or rain gauge station at the very high resolution supplemented with the aws then we should have also development of indicated drought index like vegetation drought response index or integrated vegetation index which is more more closely related with the soil moisture or river potassium so if we use insat or geovicha means high resolution daily repeat cycle satellite data to derive river potassium we have put stress index or any integrated index based on soil moisture then 
because that all can give you information about regular daily or even you can say weekly monitoring of the drought agriculture drought if you integrate soil moisture evaporative stress index all those things for defining the drought but beyond drought monitoring we need to have a uh, warning early warning about drought stress so for early warning we need to uh, integrate regional climate model along with the remote sensing so like that okay there are different kind of desert epic or post different kind of crop models are there if we integrate along with the regional climate forecast on a seasonal climatic forecast along, along with the crop model we can generate the actual evapotranspiration transport and potential evapotranspiration to derive the drought stress index and then we can forecast drought along with the drought forecast and the irrigation advisory service we can provide this sms alert about the decision related to irrigation advisory and contingency planning on the drought to the farmers so this is a conceptual framework what i am uh, telling to, to, that can be uh, implemented if we at all we need to go about drought early warning with respect to the specific crop because today early warning many early warning is in place but finally how it is going to affect the crop if we cannot we are not able to quantify because unless until we do not develop a crop specific drought early warning this all early warning will, will will help only planners it will not help farmers so for national level conceptual framework we need to have okay some inso integration agro climate risk drought vulnerability and planning prediction of long term drought based on statistical uh, approaches as well as uh, the numerical weather prediction model short term drought with the uh, monitoring with the some evaporative stress index or soil moisture or geostationary based satellite based weekly daily or once in a three days monitoring of the drought then prediction of drought through for crop specific drought stress then drought alert and the system so for long lead drought forecast you can do develop a linkage between the inso because nowadays we are finding the strong linkage between the inso phenomena and the drought in india india summer monsoon rainfall earlier it was not that but in the current century the almost more majority of drought event are linked to the inso that is why now we can construct the model stay region specific model with the inso data Uh, the southern so uh, or nino this is a temperature anomaly or southern oscillation index data to forecast uh, drought in india you see here okay all red all red bar that are all are drought now you see in the current this okay all red bar they are associated with the el nino and blue are all associated with the la nino phenomena so what we have done in gujarat also this okay anomaly rainfall anomaly the ndi anomaly that is highly correlated with the southern oscillation index as a suspect sea surface temperature anomaly so here what we have we conclude that high positive correlation is exist between this okay la, uh, el nino indices soi or sea surface temperature anomaly with the rainfall anomaly as well as the uh, ndi anomaly so we can use those indices for forecasting drought well in advance so in south asia if you go to website that is south asia drought monitor so there uses gfs forecast chief data 0.05 degree de data for spi monitoring then they use satellite images they use gfs weather forecast based on weather forecast they are constructing again the spatial uh standardized precipitation index to monitor drought so like this okay three week month ago or uh, last week one month ago this kind of okay how many percentage of area it was under drought it is a prepare okay i have not draw different kind of condition here okay you can see 23 9 last 2000 which area were under drought so extremely dry severe dry only based on the this uh, condition about CSPI and the other uh, soil moisture related stress index. 
so uh, like okay also there is a one internationally there is a one university tokyo japan they have also work on working on the developing this broad early warning system similar approach what i have said you early integrating lst and ndvi so they are integrating lst and ndvi to generate kmdi and they based on that they are forecasting you also kmdi forecast for in the future period for the drought condition so there are many satellite based drought early warning system is being developed even in india india level there is a okay water lab from gujarat uh, indian institute of technology gandhinagar they are based on a variable infiltration capacity model they are uh, simulating soil moisture and based on soil moisture they are forecasting soil moisture based drought so there are many approach, apart from this okay satellite remote sensing there are many modeling approaches mainly climate modeling and uh, hydrological modeling is going on to support and develop early warning system in india so we have brought so many is, is exist like fuse which is okay rainfall forecast water climate parameter nda then they forecast water requirement satisfaction index soil moisture and many other nda anomaly all are integrated to derive different early warning system similarly under mars crop forecasting is also done for the european region then also there is a energy and water balance monitoring which is useful for the drought forecast and the uh, is a crop yield forecast based on the crop growth model relative crop aspiration based model to forecast the deviation in the crop yield at every pixel level based on the relative crop aspiration so there are so many based on meteor set geostationary satellite data even new orbit satellite data and compare, combined with the soil watcher model and so on developing uh, forecast so this is all about okay what i want to say about the dot and early warning system in my experience what i said with you then i uh, request if any query or question please put to me thank you thank you sir Thanks. yeah thanks uh, a lot for uh, such a nice and informative presentation uh, starting from the basic concept of drought uh, dr patel has covered uh, the satellites available for drought monitoring vegetation and meteorological indices for detecting drought from space as well as he has covered the techniques for drought early warning uh, thank you sir now uh, i request the participants if you have any query Uh, you may ask directly, or you may uh, you may put your question into the chat box. Everybody is there. Okay, they, let them ask directly. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. For yeah, okay. A, uh, for delivering a very highly valuable lecture for our participants. Uh, okay. But I have okay. a small query. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, Dr. Uh, Siddiqui sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, only uh, is there any uh, model for small area, sir? Uh, mapping related to drought. Small uh, area. For what small area? Special in the spatial level. Spatial level model model means what you are for drought forecasting or only drought monitoring? Uh, only drought monitoring. So drought monitoring based on only one or two districts, and there are there is a declaration of drought from the government. Hmm. is there any modeling on the basis of uh, a small region like uh, uh, 300 km square hmm. area 200 km square area if there yeah, are sentinel 3 so, so okay. uh, like okay this okay we have done okay because we have not developed model at the models are available like wrx yes. a crop model we said so models are there we need to integrate those like nowadays you have to wear a forecast is available on a mid season so a medium term range 15 to 20 days those we have a forecast you integrate with the deset kind of model you can generate okay drought stress also yeah you have to this stress index you can generate but this all we have demonstrated for haryana punjab okay yes sir and also yes. in bundelkhand we have done also for bundelkhand Uh, yeah. Imagine for this, but if you want to do for certain region, you can do one kilometer big size. You can do this okay drought forecast, but 
for that you have to do your own modeling climate modeling all those things you can mm-hmm. today you get information data all is available but all data has to be integrated with the crop model yeah as on today crop model is not practiced for whole india those people okay requiring like okay whether it is a iwmi or it is a, a space application center or we 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 do only for the okay certain region where because finally you know very well we are in the academic organization depending yes, upon the student interest we do for yes, at our level but yes, yes such for particular region if you want hmm. only satellite base yeah yeah it can be done anyway okay in any project you can call me we'll set up there some kind of modeling techniques for the developing okay or some drought forecast related approach yeah 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 because yes. here it is a all operationalized agency it is a imb so imb has to take the mandate with the drought forecasting is only with the imb so yes, whatever sir. imb information provide that will be for pan india based all is a research and academic purpose okay hmm. thank you thank you sir thank you very much yeah any anybody else please doctor sir thank you thank you okay i'll uh, you also listen to doctor patel doctor yeah. patel i will yeah. take your mobile number from dipani veta and you have to speak in alabad university also okay you you invite i'll i'll yeah yeah, yeah. on uh, i will i i will talk to you in the evening and you come here and i will be waiting for you okay well, maybe we'll be next month once okay things will be normal okay okay no yeah. no okay. on virtual mode on virtual, oh, virtual, virtual mode, mode no issue any time any time any time okay sir. thank you very much sir thank okay. you sir okay thank so, you very much yeah. thank you uh if you have any query again i am asking you to uh, you may ask directly to dr patel dear participants have you any query or you can send me mail email yes or you can give your question to your uh, coordinator dr dipandita i'll answer yes. yeah, one by one later okay i'll share yes. email id of uh, both of our speakers uh, in the chat box so that you may uh, contact uh, to our speakers for any query okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dipani. Okay, thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, now I'll request Dr. Yar Siddiqui uh, for uh, delivering his speech. Thank Over you, to Dr. Siddiqui. Thank you, Dr. Dipani Tadatta. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Dipani Tadatta and other faculty members for organizing such a nice workshop. Uh, you, from your university vidya sagar university i am very happy uh, to see my teacher dr uh, nr patel ji and very senior scientist of the country and well recognized uh, research researcher in the field of agro meteorology meteorology and drought related studies also i would like to congratulate dr patel uh, for delivering a very highly valuable lecture uh, in the field of uh, agro meteorology and droughts and he has given uh, various new information to our participant and he has highlighted a very crucial problem of the country related to water scarcity and problem of droughts uh, in the country and there are uh, there are several issues in the country which we have to discuss uh, in the form of lecture in the form of discussion uh, like uh, issue of sustainable livelihood and sustainable agriculture is a very important issue an issue of food security and fodder security as he has mentioned in his lecture also yeah. and issue of rural livelihood and issue of livestock development and issue of agricultural sustainability and he has also mentioned a uh, deficit in rainfall and we all are working uh, to see the nature of rainfall uh, distribution of rainfall varying uh, rainfall uh, intensity in different region and deficit of uh, deficit in soil moisture also he has highlighted a rise in global temperature condition a rise in water demand uh, these all deviations are very important and so we have to make a, a discussion on this uh, aspect so uh, actually he is uh, related uh, with uh, uh, having expertise in the field of geospatial technology and 
working on these issues and uh, he has given uh, information related to the data of remote sensing data and use of GSP shell technology and how we can develop a plan for uh, um, agricultural development at micro level. That's why, that's why I was asking about the modeling in uh, a small region. Suppose you have given any districts or any type and you are working on routes. So it is very important to, to know uh, which type of data we can use for the modeling purpose. So uh, I would plan job and uh, working on special issues and then I will hide some, uh, uh, I, will, uh, I will highlight some uh, theoretical issues. Um, then I will discuss about the application part. So let me allow the, uh, how I can share the PPT and other and related information. There are some participants from Uttar Pradesh, Dr. Anil Sau. Uh, I welcome you. And you are uh, assistant professor in now. So my topic, yes, uh, my topic of discussion is the dimension of research in drought and identification studies. And second part will be covering role of geospatial technology in mapping and monitoring of desertification. So um, there are some geography students. Uh, before going in scientific approach, we have to uh, make a study about the conceptual uh, foundation of the problem. Uh, understanding doubts and desertification, it is okay. And he has mentioned water scarcity with reference to given demand in specific region. This is the simple definition of drought. And you can say, if there is a continued deficiency of moisture, then we are uh, we are uh, ascending towards the drought-like conditions. And there are some other important uh, definition, as he has mentioned about uh, what is the types of drought. But there are two two important problems, droughts and desertification. Uh, desertification is very important because I will uh, mention here, earlier the definition of uh, desertification in the year 1977, uh, in the conference of UNCAR, United Nations Conference on Desertification, the, con the definition of desertification was given, uh, diminution and destruction of land towards arid, semi-arid and sub-humid region due to adverse climatic condition. But in the year 1992, in the Conference of United Nation, Nation Environmental Program, the definition of desertification was changed uh, from the definition of 1997. And again, this definition was redefined. Desertification means degradation of land uh, towards arid, semi-arid and sub humid region due to adverse climatic condition and adverse human activities. So this is very important thing. In the 1992, uh, the conference of Rio de Janeiro, uh, the adverse activities of man was included. So we have to uh, know the what is the conceptual um, foundation and what is the concept of the drought and desertification, particularly in the developing countries. So yes, there are three types of drought as uh, Professor Dr. Patel has already mentioned. But you know. That there, there is a simply definition of drought is there is a continued deficiency of moisture and deviation of rainfall from its normal value, then it is drought. And what is the meaning of agricultural droughts? Uh, agricultural droughts occurs when the rainfall and soil moisture are in, uh, inadequate to meet the water requirement of the ground, then it is agricultural drought. I would like to mention. Uh, one of very uh, most important data is available water holding capacity, AWSC. If you are having the data of AWSC, then you can understand the, what is the condition of uh, uh, droughts in the country. There are various uh, meteorological parameters uh, and uh, climatic uh, characteristics uh, uh, identifying the uh, meteorological personality of the region like uh, rainfall distribution, coefficient of variation of rainfall, sunshine duration, thermal regime, everything is related with the droughts. So there is a hydrological drought, there is a lowering of ground water table, then there is a sign of droughts. So these are, these are the theoretical aspects. He has mentioned that in India, around 68% of the country, 68% um, uh, of the total uh, 
area of natural area is prone to drought in varying degrees. Talking about the Bundelkhand and what is you know, what is the composition and what is the uh, composition of the population, what is the nature and distribution of the population, and how many percent uh, of agriculture, uh, um, how many percent of net zone area is there? So there is a there is a uh, there should be an understanding of uh, our statistic related to land use land, land cover. In India, around 68 percent of net zone area is prone to drought in varying degrees. And nearly 35 percent, which receive rainfall between uh, 750 and 11, uh, 1,125 mm, is considered drought prone. While 33 percent receiving less than 750 mm is chronically drought prone area. So uh, there are certain deviations we have to understand when you are going to work uh, in the field of agrometeorology or drought-like uh, conditions. So about 56% uh, of net cultivated area is rent fed and accounting for 44% of food production. So the first, uh, we, we know uh, the first Bengal famine of uh, 70, 1770 is estimated to have wiped out nearly one third of the population. So there are several um, uh, incidents uh, which uh, which, all, uh, which are all already knowing. So, uh, so here you see, uh, the, what is the dis status of desertification in India? In India, there are 12% uh, of geographical area are devoted to under the desert-like condition. Uh, nearly 96 billion hectares are, are close to 29% uh, of India's area is undergoing de under degradation of several types of degradation. According to government data recently presented to the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, India lost 31% or 5.65 million hectares of grassland area in a decade. The extent of degraded land in India is over 105 million hectares or about 35% of India's area. India has witnessed an increase in the level of desertification in 26 of 29 states between 2003 to 2005 and 2011 to 2013. So more than 80% of country's degraded land lies in just nine states. So this is the situation. In Rajasthan, there are 12 districts come under the process of desertification. And this is, these are Barmer, Bikaner, Churu, Jaisalmer, Jodhpur, Nagaur, Pali, Sikar, Junjunu, and uh, Hanumangal, Ganganar. There are several other districts. We are facing the problem of uh, desert-like condition. So, so we see and uh, the goal of sustainable goals. Uh, we are talking about the sustainability of the agriculture and we are talking about the sustainable society and we are there are there are several goals are related directly related with the agricultural sustainability if you are handling the goal number one no poverty and eh, zero hunger uh, you see here there are several goals of sustainable development and uh, no poverty uh, and zero hunger uh, goal related to climate change climate action all are related with the um, uh, drought and land degradation studies. So here we have mentioned, first of all, if you are going to uh, make our interest to study drought and desertification related studies, then uh, as a student, as a researcher, we have to uh, make a understanding of certain types of deviation. Like we have to uh, make the study related to deviation in the topographical features of the country and we, uh, to deviation in the meteorological characteristics of the country, deviation in the distribution of population, deviation in the percentage of net zone area and cropping intensity, and what is the method of practicing agriculture, in which area, diffusion of innovations, and we have to make a study on agroclimatic agro regions of the study and agroclimatic variation. So these are important aspects. And simply, we are going to take the training of the geospatial technology and we are not doing the what is the meaning of ancillary data like uh, net zone area and uh, grass zone area and cultural wasteland and fallow land and uh, current fallow land and we are not knowing the basics of the ancillary data and uh, which have been published by the government and which have been uh, given by the government so uh, all these things are important 
if you are handling the uh, uh, technical issue and if, if we are going to take the advanced uh, uh, geospatial uh, technology training first of all we have to uh, know about the um, uh, real problem issues and about uh, um, detailed uh, information related to our uh, geomorphic setup our geographical setting our geographical and meteorological personality so these are the deviation deviations in topographic topographical features deviation in meteorological characteristics deviation in distribution of population deviation in percentage of net zone area and cropping intensity method of practicing agricultural diffusion of innovation and what is the agro climatic variations uh, you you see after 1940 and 1950 uh, there were various agricultural geographer have developed uh, various uh, techniques to measure the uh, uh, agricultural productivity and you have already studied about jc weaver and rafi ullah method and and professor uh, jasbir singh and professor mohammad shafi all uh, geographer have developed uh, uh, techniques to measure the agricultural productivity we are handling as a geographer we are handling uh, various issues related to agricultural problem so all deviations are um, are uh, uh, having uh, some information so first of all when you are going to apply the remote sensing and techniques then you have to make a in depth study on these issues now you see another aspect of the country uh, you uh, simply you are uh, simply we are not uh, giving any information related to uh, remote sensing and geospatial technology but i want to draw your attention towards the distribution pattern of population take an example of uh, what is the concentration of population and you add the total population like uh, bihar is having 8.58% of total population of the country and west bengal is having 7.55% of total population of the country when we, uh, we when we add uh, uh, population of these two states you will find this is equal to the population of uttar pradesh and uttar pradesh is having nearly 17% population of the country you add uh, the po total population of uh, andhra pradesh madhya pradesh and odisha you will find that these uh, three states are having uh, equal population with the uttar pradesh and you add tamil nadu rajasthan karnataka and gujarat you will find four states are having uh, uh, equal population with the uttar pradesh but Seventeen states are having total population equal to the Uttar Pradesh. So, what is the nature of distribution of population, and what is the nature of land use condition, land use land cover statistics? All these uh, important consideration uh, should be taken in mind if you are going to make a study on uh, any uh, any planning issues or any other issues. then these are the important uh, these uh, these statistics statistic will help to make any uh, plan formulation and these are the population deviation uh, suppose we are going to uh, take uh, uh, uttarakhand region and rajasthan region and madhya pradesh region every region is different uh, if if you are going to make a study on whole india and we are taking data like modi then other information and we are going to take modeling and everything should be done in respect of population and here you see uh, india is a very large country and having uh, nearly uh, second largest population and uh, having only 2.4% geographical area you see uh, we, uh, uttar pradesh is just uh, equal to brazil and if you will add the population of uttar pradesh and bihar you will find united states of america and jharkhand is having more than population of australia and andhra pradesh is having uh, five times population of australia so we are handling the situation of uh, second largest population of the world so these issues are very important how you are going to map ab now i will discuss about the issue uh, we are discussing about the sustainability and uh, sustainable agriculture and food security and uh, fodder security first of all Uh, we have to understand you remember the year 1798 when robert malthus uh, mentioned that 
देर इज ए ग्रोथ ऑफ पॉपुलेशन इन जियोमेट्रिक फॉर्म वन टू सिक्सटीन एंड सिक्सटी फोर एंड द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ फूड इन अर्थमेटिक फॉर्म वन टू थ्री फोर इन दिस फॉर्म सो दिस वॉज द इशू ऑफ इयर सेवनटीन नाइनटी एट वेन द Uh, population of the world was only only one billion, but now we are having the population seven point three point five billion. So always, uh, always you see this book, principle of an essay on principle of population. You all are geographer, an essay on uh, principle of population, uh, which was published in the year seventeen ninety eight. An other book of uh, Robert Walthus was published on observation on the effect of corn laws. Which was eighteen uh, published in uh, in eighteen fourteen. Definition of political economy. All these books are important. So we are uh, we are handling this this situation from the last two uh, hundred years. This is not the new issue, and it, this is very uh, famous book um, uh, written by Jose de Castro, the Geography of Hunger, uh, which was uh, um, uh, which was uh, he he was a Brazilian uh, author. and he has uh, mentioned uh, in his book and there is several other problem related to um, depletion of uh, agricultural productivity and he has mentioned that um, uh, food supply as a social problem created not primarily by over population but by inadequate food production due to a complex uh, ill health <laughs> agricultural monoculture undesirable land tenure system colonial exploitation ignorance Uh, lack of scientific farming here you see lack of scientific farming and varied religious and cultural factor in this respect he sides with the positive agriculture and public health schools of thought and opposes the new malthusian school which holds that soil has a fluid limit of productivity so uh, there are several um, pioneering work and we have to make our understanding understanding by handling uh, work of uh, Uh, well recognized researchers you see here dana uh, the meadows uh, and he has written the limit to growth this was very important uh, book for geographer and she is best uh, known as lead author of the book uh, the limit to growth and thinking in system of premier i will i would like to draw your attention towards the contribution of norman norman arnes bolla he is father of green revolution and he has done a commendable work in order to increase the productivity his innovative experiment contributed significantly to the implementation of green revolution in many developing countries including india i'm sorry and now i will i would like to draw your attention Uh, the work, contribution of uh, uh, dr m s swami nathan he has uh, he is also a father of green revolution in india so these are the conceptual foundation when you see uh, he has handled several projects related to uh, the sustainable development and sustainable agriculture sustainable food security and biodiversity everything have been taken by different institute of india whether it has uh, whether it is central asia drone research institute or any other, other institute you will see there are many scientists are working on the um, agricultural sustainability and related issues so these are the important aspect and uh, you see there are uh, research potential in geographical studies not only in drought related studies but every aspect of the geographical facts are important water resource management land resource management land evaluation everything related with the drought and desertification disaster management forestry and ecology agriculture and soils urban and regional planning everything is related with uh, um, uh, application part so we have to make our understand clear understanding but being a student of geography if we are working on the related uh, related studies we should know what are the important institution of india and what is the important contribution of different institutes of india take an example of central research institute for dry land agriculture if you are interested to work in the uh, related field then you have to explore the possibilities of researchers and what type of research is going on different research institute uh, you you can uh, you can explore your possibilities in central agri zone research institute jodhpur you can explore 
your possibility is related to research opportunity in Indian Institute of Remote Sensing and you can explore your possibility to get admission in Central Research Institute of, for Dry Land Agriculture, Hyderabad, under the, which is running under the aegis of Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, formulated by District Agriculture Contingency Plans. So all these informations are very important for our researcher. That's, that's why I have tried to um, assemble these information uh, before you. And this is the premier institute where you can find the well-recognized uh, and pioneering research work related to um, drought-related studies and desertification uh, related studies. Uh, Professor N.R. Patel ji, uh, Professor S.K. Saha ji, Professor Dr. Uh, Professor Suresh Kumar ji, all scientists have done a commendable work in the related field. So, Kadri uh, already established in the year uh, 1958. There are some other institutes, as, uh, as Dr. Patel already mentioned in, in his lecture, Indian Meteorological Department. We are not having information uh, related to different institutes of the country. And we are studying paper, we are downloading research paper, we are, uh, we are making our study, doing PAT and all these things. But we are not uh, we are not consulting the government website. We are not uh, consulting the information related to government agencies. What the scientists they are doing and uh, what is objective goals, objectives of the different institute. When, when you will explore these government website and you will find there are the, the, the motive, the motto and objective and goals of the government and achievement of the government. So these are the important uh, institute of the government and sometimes you explore and what is going on in the uh, Department of Agricultural Metrology Division Pune and what is going on in the Metrological Department IMD Pune and what is going on in uh, researchers uh, in the Central Arid Zone uh, Kaveri Jodhpur. All institute will give you a new information. There is another uh, drought research institute in Pune. And this uh, institute provides you about the graph. If you are interested to the know the information related to graph in Kerala, then you explore uh, the website uh, Drought Research Unit in Pune. And there is another institute, National Research Center for Agroforestry. And all this information you should know. And National Agricultural Drought Assessment and Monitoring System developed by Department of Space for the Department of Agriculture. So, we are developing methodology and we are reading research paper, but we are not having much information. After getting degree, master degree, and after getting PhD degree, uh, where I can absorb, where I can be uh, accommodated. So, these uh, research institute will help and you will find there is a different uh, reports which have been published by the government and you can download uh, reports um, already uh, you will find in the website of the government institute. So I have already assembled this information for the students. There is a crop weather watch group and inter-ministerial mechanism of central government and CWWG evaluates information and data furnished by IMD and other scientific and technical to determine the the like impact of mobilical events and other parameters for agriculture. So these are the valuable uh, now you see uh, government initiative and government uh, uh, already started uh, related to uh, development program DDP uh, DDP in the year uh, 70, 1977 to 1978 and drought prone areas program DA, DPAP to minimize the adverse effect of drought on production of crops and livestock and productivity of land, water and human resources. So there are uh, different government initiatives in the related field like uh, DDP and DPAP. Sometimes you download uh, details of DDP and DP 
AP, you will find what will be the objective of your research. So these are the important aspects. Then you can work for PAT or MP or any other project. So what what is the desired development program? What was the objective of the government? What was the objective of the state government? Because situation is different. If you are talking about the Bundelkhand and if you are talking about the Uttarakhand or Meghalaya, situation is different program by Department of Land Resources, Ministry of Rural Development aims to minimize the adverse effect of drought and control desertification through rejuvenation of natural resource base of the identified desert areas. And the scheme is funded on the basis of 70 5% uh, and 25 ratio by central and state government and covered 235 blocks of 40 districts in seven states. Then here you can find how I can work in the block level and what, what is the objective, what is the methodology has been adopted by the government officials. So, so the approach of scientists and approach of government officers is different. If we are going to work and we are going to find out the situation, you are the scientist. But when the government officers are working on the related issue and there may be a different approach. So I have to move fast because uh, I have to move towards application part of the remote sensing also. But I want to draw your attention sub government uh, initiative because it is very necessary to understand common area development. Because our students, those who are studying in BA and MA and Phil and PhD, they are having only uh, knowledge about uh, their topic. But what is the background of the land degradation related studies? Uh, these backgrounds should be uh, studied, uh, like command area development. What was the objective of command area development? It was launched in the year 17. And in trying to optimize agricultural production uh, through efficient water resource management, it, it was uh, there are an, uh, another program integrated watershed management program which was launched in the year 1989 to 1989 uh, to 90, and there was a Haryali guidelines. Every document of the government you have to download if you are going to make any final findings observation. You have to make, um, uh, you have to download every uh, document related to government major programs. Then you will find various new information. Uh, these are development program which was launched in the year 1995 to minimize the adverse effect of drought and to rejuvenate the natural resource base of identified desert areas. It was launched for hot desert areas, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Haryana, and cold desert areas of Jammu, Kashmir, and Himachal Pradesh. It is implemented by Ministry of Rural Development. Uh, India became a signatory of United uh, Nations Convention to Combat Desertification in 1994 and, and ratified in 1996. So, so there is a soil conservation in the catchment of river valley project and flood prone areas. So these are the infor important information you have to collect the information from, one, from the different website. National Afforestation Program, it is being implemented in, since 2000. Uh, you will find common objectives, common aims. Sometimes you will find we are, uh, we are studying about the National Afforestation, how it is related with uh, uh, water crisis, how it is related with the drought development, how it is related with the combating desertification. So there are several, you will find information on Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So every ministry you have to explore if you are working. There is another issue, fodder and feed development scheme. It was launched in the year 2010. But we are not doing. Uh, it is a it is a question of studies. Those who are preparing for but as scientists we are not doing how many programs have been uh, have been launched uh, from the government, but we are not doing, uh, even we are not having much information on the state level. So, water and feed development scheme, it was launched in the year 2010. It aims to improve degraded grassland and also the vegetation cover of problematic soils like saline, acidic and heavy soil. 
and uh, it is also related with the ministry of uh, fisheries animal husbandry and uh, dairies national mission on green india this is uh, this is also very uh, well uh, recognized program and uh, it is a part of national action plan on climate change napcc it was approved in the year 2014 so deadline uh, deadline of 10 years it was uh, it was approved in 2014 with the objective of protecting restoring and enhancing india's diminishing forest cover with the line of 10 years uh, it is being implemented by ministry of environment forest and climate change so all these programs we are not having much information about these program and we are doing modeling and we are downloading remote sensing data and we are getting uh, training and we are publishing paper also but we are not having much information about the our objective and goals then this is not the issue of publishing paper this is not the issue of uh, um, completing thesis this is the issue of taking a big project from the government then you have to make your study about the about your state about different state and what is the situation in bundelkhand and what is the situation in karnataka and hyderabad so that's why now there is a uh, important issue uh, related to desertification and land degradation at the south of india it was released by isro in the year 2016 my teacher uh, very senior geographer of the country professor h s sharma also contributed a lot uh, in making this uh, uh, desertification atlas which was uh, launched in the year 2016 so our student of geography should know uh, these uh, events Uh, this contribution made by um, different organization so combating desertification and land degradation is one of the third area covered by it bundelkhand region so there are uh, seven districts uh, in uttar pradesh jhansi jalon lalitpur hamirpur bahoba banda chitpur my friend uh, dr arnab kundu has done a commendable work in this field and dr dipanita uh, datta also is a well recognized researcher in the field so uh, we uh, when we are handling the situation of small region then we have to make a different kind of approach because we are working on uttar pradesh or bundelkhand and rajasthan it is state level information but sometimes we should make a made a make a methodology related to small area information suppose we are working in hamirpur or mahoba or chitpur or banda or any small region then you have to develop the methodology to find out the uh, find out the uh, relevant reason so global effort to prevent desertification now you see uh, other information related to uh, effort uh, related to effort to prevent desertification like the bone challenge Uh, to bring 150 million hectares of world uh, deforested Hello. and degraded land into restoration by 2020 and 350 million hectare by 2030 this is the target and goal 15 of sustainable development goal sdg goal 15 2030 it declares that we are determined to protect the planet from degradation including through sustainable consumption and production united nation convention to uh, convention to combat desertification uh, uncd it was established in the year 1994 uh, the sole uh, legally binding international agreement linking environmental and degradation um, the, the world day to combat desertification and drought is observed every year on 17 june ab ye date and this is very important date and there is a new term green uh, green wall initiative by global environmental facility gef these all are new term for you uh, i think this is very important to explore uh, instead of uh, getting um, technology first of all try to develop your uh, mind mindset uh, if you are interested to um, jump towards the studies of uh, uh, these aspects first of all you uh, uh, set your mind and this uh, this field is having a very um, wide scope for researchers in india there are few researcher those who are working in the related field 
and you will find uh, in internet some scholar have done a commendable work as mentioned by dr patel wayne palmer and you will find the pioneering work of uh, palmer uh, which was published in the year 1965 meteorological drought uh, for the office of climatology of us uh, weather bureau you will find uh, popul popularly known as uh, palmer drought severity index pdsi this there is a pioneering work published by palmer and there are various other uh, uh, scientists are working in the related field and there is a major contribution from bengal and dr amalkar earlier he was a senior scientist and head of the division of resource management and dr amalkar has done a commendable work in the related field there is a late surender singh the work of late surender singh now dr anal patel is uh, having expertise in the related field annam puddu dipanita datta having a very good paper in the related field and try to explore the good paper on internet then you will find uh, different types of uh, different type uh, of work uh, already uh, done by uh, well recognized uh, researcher of the country but we are having little knowledge about uh, we are doing a pg phd mphil everything we are doing but we are not doing where we can observe after a after all aim of uh, research scholar aim of research student is to explore his future is to explore his uh, destination and how i can be associated with the uh, institute so the premier institute of the country and premier institute of the world uh, take an example uh, some of the institute of uh, related to climate change i have tried to um, collect the information from the website you will see there are different institute which are related <coughs> with the climate change studies because climate change climate change is related to drought related studies desertification related studies forest fire related studies every every aspect uh, they handle every aspect uh, every type of disaster so there is a center for climatic change research indian institute of tropical uh, meteorology located in pune maharashtra uh, sometimes you and they are doing sometimes you explore center for climate and environmental studies cces which is uh, in kolkata and what they are doing it, this institute is uh, widely recognized for climate change and environmental studies huh? devecha center for the climate change indian institute of science uh, which is located in bangalore so there are different types of institute generally our student they are not knowing दीपानी मैं ज्यादा तेज तो नहीं जा रहा हूँ अभी मेरा बहुत स्लाइड बचा हुआ इसलिए आई एम मूविंग फास्ट दीपानी आप मुझे सुन रहे हैं यस यस सर सर यू कंटिन्यू बट वी हैव लिमिटेड टाइम सो इफ यू कैन प्लीज स्किप फ्यू स्लाइड्स आई विल फिनिश इन विद इन फिफ्टीन मिनट ओके Okay, okay. 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 sir. So these are the the institute, uh, Cardiff University, which is located in Wales, uh, UK, United Kingdom. So uh, um, you you explore, uh, you, if you are doing PG or MPhil or PhD, you explore what uh, well recognized uh, institute of India and uh, abroad. The Center for Atmospheric and Ocean Studies, uh, Arna Pundu was associated in the Atmospheric and Ocean Studies in Allahabad. located in allahabad national center for coastal research located in chennai and uh, forest research institute located in dehradun so every institute is providing um, opportunity uh, to collaborate your research and there are some other uh, some other institute like indian institute of soil science gopal uh, if you are interested in soil study then you can uh, you can contact uh, uh, indian institute of soil science Central Valley Drone Research Institute, located in Jodhpur, as already mentioned, Water Resource Development and Management. <coughs> and here you see <coughs> University of Missouri, Columbia, USA, uh, Institute related to Natural and Water Resource Study, and you will find University of Cambridge for uh, Conservation Study and Center for the Study of Regional Development.
JNU, Economic Geography and Population Studies. And there are uh, important uh, institutes, IRS, Dehradun, Remote Sensing and Geoinformatics, uh, and IUA, Urban Studies. So here you see, already mentioned uh, Dr. Patel in Dices about uh, heredity in Dices. Heredity means there is a ratio between precipitation and potential evapotranspiration. And to get information related to uh, evaporation is very difficult task. Then you you study farmer drought severity index, stand trial pre pre uh, precipitation index SPI. That, that is wet spell at multiple time scale and periods, as mentioned by Dr. Patel. Though I will not go in detail in drought related studies and modeling studies. Crop moisture index and difference. Uh, between actual and climatologically expect, uh, expected evapotranspiration. And you will find uh, different uh, published papers in, uh, in, in related studies. So I will uh, talk about the desertification mapping. As I have already mentioned, desertification is land degradation towards arid, semi-arid and sub-humid region due to adverse climatic condition and adverse uh, um, human activities. So you you have to select you have to select what type of indicator should be uh, should be identified in order to map the desertification area. So there is a risk of geomorphological hazard in vulnerable and fragile ecosystem, and there is a risk of edaphic edaphic hazard and decline in probable potential of land, and risk of meteorological hazard, risk of anthropogenic activities. Change in vegetation fraction cover. Uh, Dr. Patel mentioned about different type vegetation indices. Change in vegetation fraction cover. Risk of grazing pressure, grazing intensity. Risk of declining crop yield index. Risk of groundwater depletion change. And every aspect you can submit a project. In every aspect you can publish a paper. So these indicators you have to select the mon uh, select when you are going to map the. A fragility of the ecosystem. For example, on different indication, indicators, we have taken only three. Vegetation, climate, and soil quality. And this is the simple methodology flow diagram if you are working on the desertification aspect and uh, there are some uh, parameters and some indicators and you get uh, data related to vegetation. Uh, information related to vegetation, fraction cover, climate conditions, and soil quality. So in soil, there are different parameters, but we are going to collect the information from the ground, from the field, and you can collect the soil sample from the uh, uh, land, soil texture, soil depth, and or uh, organic matter and organic carbon you can test from the laboratory. And there are uh, some important hereditary data you can download download from the website. So this is your own observation. If you are going to make a field visit in the fragile ecosystem, then you are giving and you are giving the weight and you are going to assign the weight and which uh, which area is having best condition and which area is having worst condition. So in order to uh, fragility of the ecosystem, you have to assign the weight. Suppose you have given sandy soil. Uh, for worse condition, and you have given one coarse loamy for coarse loamy soil. So you have to identify the region on the basis of your own observation. And in the in the same types of landform, and you will find the different kind of situation. Suppose in desert landscape, you will find open dunes uh, with sparse bushes and grasses. Uh, in the same uh, land uh, landscape, you will find sparse bushes and grasses with dune ridges. And cropland single, and cropland uh, single with moderate dunes, and cropland single with partial dunes, and cropland single with stabilized dunes, and cropland double, where cultivation is possible two times in a year. And you will find forest also. In Rajasthan, the geographical area of the districts is very large. And take an example of Jaisalmer, and Jaisalmer is having 38,401 square kilometers. When you will the, see the area of uh, Churu and distance uh, from north to south, there is 200 kilometers. You cannot imagine 
the area of Chulu is thirteen thousand seven hundred forty kilometer. You cannot imagine there are some districts who are having um, twenty thousand square kilometer. So uh, when you will find uh, eastern part of the district, you will find slightly better situation, and when you find the western part of situation, you will find fragile ecosystem. So you you can uh, assign weight on the basis of situation. And in geospatial techno technology, we generally integrate the uh, layer of information, various information. And suppose you have taken 25 indicators. So all the indicators can be assigned a different kind of weight, different, different kind of score, the like soil quality score, climate quality score, vegetation quality score, land use, land cover score, erosion score, depth to groundwater score, quality score. Finally, you can standardize the score and then you can give the final picture. Uh, Dr. Patel um, already mentioned about the uh, certain derivations like temperature condition index and I will I will draw your attention towards the work of F. Kogan and you download the uh, paper uh, which have been published by Kogan in the year uh, in year 1995, 2001 and 2000. Two and very well recognized work of uh, Kogan. He has used certain uh, uh, derivation related to temperature condition index, uh, T uh, TCI, VCI, and the, uh, the mentioned by Dr. Patel also, and vegetation condition index. And you will find the methodology how we can um, analyze vegetation condition index and how we can analyze vegetation health index. Uh, index, vegetation, uh, fraction, all these things. You will find um, this type of situation. Here you see most of the western part of the Churu districts are having fragile uh, condition. When will you, you will try to make relationship between TCI and BCI and you will find the situation of fragility of the ecosystem. So, and this is the relationship of TCI and VCI. And you can correlate this uh, information also with information um, uh, information received from the IMD. So if you are collecting ancillary data and you are uh, doing uh, work by uh, application of remote sensing, then you can correlate what is, the, what is the situation. If the VHI is less than 15, it indicates drought from severe to exceptional intensity. If the TCI is less than 40, then it indicates there is a thermal stress. Uh, if the TCI temperature condition index is more than 60, it indicates there is a favorable condition. So you will find when uh, situation is uh, worst and when situation is having best condition. Likewise, you can identify the uh, landscape, you can identify the uh, area on the basis of your own observation and you can assign your um, uh, work, uh, your, uh, your weight, and you can identify region. Then you can prepare your map. And this is the uh, image um, which can be correlated uh, on your map. So here you see, this is the uh, information related to um, land use, land cover, and every aspect, in every aspect, you can publish a good paper. And what is the condition of uncultivable land, cultivable wasteland, fallow land, current fallow land, net zone area, area zone more than once, grazing and pastoral land, dry land farming area. Every information is having good scope of research. And this is the integration of various layers of soil uh, quality, like uh, depth, texture, distribution of organic carbon. And you will find the soil after the integration of all these information, you will find soil quality of map. So there is a, um, there is a, um, you can standardize value also from one to two, as you have already done in the map of land use and land cover statistics. Here you see, you can get information from the groundwater in different land use, in different land use ecosystem. And suppose you are collecting data from forest area, from single cropland, from double cropland, from sandy area, and you are going to uh, test uh, soil on laboratory, 
you will find different value of percent of organic carbon and distribution organic car organic carbon and there is a um, derivation on band six. Uh, you will, uh, if you are working on land set data on band six, there is information related to thermal data and uh, derivation related to soil brightness index. So there is a combination of field survey information and you can correlate it field survey information with uh, information um, derived from the satellite drive data. Suppose you have downloaded data, satellite uh, land set data and you have uh, analyzed data from the laboratory and uh, on the basis of your sample and you can correlate what was the percentage of organic carbon, what was the percentage of organic matter and uh, you, it can be related with the soil brightness index also. So every information you can capture, this is the derivation of soil brightness index, every information you can ca capture. There are several other parameters. Suppose you are interested to uh, know the what is the fodder requirement in the area. If the man is responsible, if the human activities are responsible for desertification, then there is a, a livestock on limited pasture land. Then you have to um, calculate the fodder requirement. And uh, what is the composition of livestock population in the area? What is the number of camels? What is the number of sheep, buffalo? Every thing you have to take into the consideration. And you have to make uh, you have to standardize the weight of adult cattle unit. Suppose goat is uh, having uh, 60 kg of uh, 40 kg of weight and camel is having uh, 400 kg of weight and uh, buffalo is having 300 kg of uh, weight. Then you have to standardize the weight of the different animals. Then you will find one, one value of one uh, adult cattle unit. And you can multiply multiply total number of adult total number of live livestock into uh, what is the standard weight of the um, uh, adult cattle unit. So you will find uh, total weight of the livestock. Then, if any animal is uh, taking pastures from the ground, uh, then uh, it it can be assumed two percent of the body weight animal can graze. Then you will calculate the what is the fodder requirement in different area. So there are uh, there are different aspects. Uh, as a researcher, you can identify the problem. As the researcher, you have to make the whole picture of the level. And this is the impact of uh, human beings. And you will find the information from the Google archives. Uh, you will find where there is a settlement. Uh, uh, settlement and there is a, uh, evidence of uh, adverse human activities. So several, uh, several areas you can identify from the archives and you can make a relation. Uh, this uh, image has been provided uh, to me by uh, Dr. Kundu. And this is the <coughs> nature of geomorphological pattern on the basis of satellite drive data. You can easily um, compare uh, the situation uh, in different uh, years. Likewise, after the integration of um, uh, integration of various information, uh, you can find out the final picture of desertification status uh, about vegetation cover, stabilized dunes, open dunes, built up area, partially stabilized dunes, and other important aspects. So you can you can find the situation like this, and you can uh, you can make a final picture of level of fragility level of uh, severity in a fragile ecosystem and you prepare a final map. So it is up to you. <laughs> you are going to make a green uh, world, green earth, or you are living in the desert area. And um, I'm sorry, Deepanita, um, I have presented it very fast because uh, there, was a, there was a pressure of time, limitation of time, and you have given only 40 minutes, and there was a, a more than 50 slides Thank you very much for giving me space to uh, discuss some important points related to the drought and land degradation studies. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, thank you for such a nice presentation. Uh, Dr. Siddiqui has highlighted the scenario of drought and desertification. 
from the very ground level um, the national missions action plans which are essential for drought studies um, he has also mentioned the importance of starting the existing government uh, initiatives which is very um, essential for any researcher uh, working in this field uh, thank you sir again for enriching us with your valuable talk मेरा कहना सिर्फ इतना है कि हम लोग बहुत बड़ी बड़ी रिसर्च कर जाते हैं लेकिन गवर्नमेंट कहाँ पर है और हम लोग कहा हम लोगों का उद्देश्य रहता है कि पेपर छपना एपीआई मिलना ये ये असली मकसद नहीं है हमको जितने भी गवर्नमेंट के ऑफिस हैं वेबसाइट हैं उनमें जाके एक्सप्लोर करना है कि गवर्नमेंट कहाँ जा रही है हमारा उद्देश्य क्या है और हम अपने करियर को कि दुनिया के भारत के किस इंस्टीट्यूट में यू जी करने के बाद रिसर्च करने के लिए यूनिवर्सिटी और रिसर्च करने के बाद कहा जाओगे उस पर मेरा फोकस था टेक्नोलॉजी लेना अच्छी बात है लेकिन जब हम अपने करियर को लेकर जाएंगे तो कहा जाएंगे तो ज्यादातर हमारे यूजी पीजी और पीएचडी स्टूडेंट हैं उस पर ध्यान नहीं रहता है कि हमको दुनिया में कहा चीजें मिलेंगी अपने आप को एक्सप्लोर करने के लिए इसलिए मैंने उसको हाईलाइट किया थैंक यू सर सर इट वॉज अ वेरी नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन वी एंजॉय इट थैंक यू okay uh, dear participants will um, uh, i am now asking you if you have any query you may ask directly to uh, professor siddiqui lekin main apne participants se kehna chahta hu ki dr dipanjita datta aur arna khud hi ek established naam ho chuke hain bharat ke aur ye dr patel patel ke shagird rahe hain student rahe hain to inka bhi jo work hai आप डाउनलोड करिए और देखिए बहुत अच्छा काम इन लोगों ने किया है और कभी भी मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगेगा आई विल रिस्पॉन्ड यू विल मेल मी आर यू कैन गिव माय मोबाइल नंबर टू स्टूडेंट आल्सो समटाइम्स ओके नो प्रॉब्लम वन थिंग आई मस्ट मेंशन दैट आई हैव लर्न ऑल दिस थिंग्स फ्रॉम माय गुरुजीज एंड प्रोफेसर सिद्दीकी माय गुरुजी डॉक्टर पटेल एंड डॉक्टर सिद्दीकी अर्नब के साथ तो मैं बीकानेर में मैंने सर्वे भी किया है अर्नब के साथ तो बहुत रहा हूँ यहाँ इलाहाबाद में भी रहे और अर्नब दिखाई नहीं दे रहे हैं आज वो हमको लगता है कनेक्टेड है रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं करा है उन्होंने लगता है आई थिंक वाचिंग थ्रू यूट्यूब आई थिंक मेरे एक बहुत अच्छे स्टूडेंट असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर है उन्नाव में डॉक्टर अनिल साहू भी सामने दिखाई दे रहे हैं इसलिए उनका भी धन्यवाद आपने ज्वाइन किया थैंक यू नमस्ते नमस्ते Okay, so now um, we'll meet with you again at yes, uh, 1:30 p.m. and our post-lunch session will include the overview of Google Earth Engine and uh, application of the web-based uh, platform for uh, uh, monitoring and early warning of drought um, by using different kind of satellite data. And you learn a lot um, uh, through this uh, workshop, I think, and this demonstration. The post-lunch session will also be very interesting for you. So uh, now, uh, sir. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can you you can provide lunch, coffee, everything on WhatsApp. Yes, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we'll meet you again at one uh, thirty. Okay
ഹലോ 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 കൻ യു ഹിയർ മീ യെസ് മാം യെസ് മാം ഓക്കെ okay uh, let's start the post launch session chalo i welcome you again in our post launch session we have uh, two consecutive demonstration in this session uh the first part of this session will be conducted by mr bijoy krishna gayan doctoral fellow of the department of remote sensing and gis you will learn uh, the basic overview uh, on google earth engine how does it work how to find required data for uh, uh, any drought related uh, and then the next session, session will be conducted by mr animesh choudhury junior research fellow of dstscrb project um and he will show you how different vegetation indices uh, and uh, uh, different models uh, for drought monitoring and uh, early warning um, can be conducted through google earth engine platform okay now i will request uh, b joy krishna gain uh, to continue his demonstration over to mr gain हेलो बिजोय कुड यू प्लीज टर्न ऑन योर माइक्रोफोन बिजोय टर्न ऑन योर माइक्रोफोन Hello everyone. 
Uh, I am Vijay Krishna Gai. Um, I like to thank Pradipanita Keda for giving me the opportunity to present the uh, to host the Google Athenji platform uh, in the uh, geospatial data analysis. Before going to the uh, Google Athenji uh, uh, platform, so we try to recall our basic uh, uh, previous and past uh, geospatial data processing system. How we are uh, going to uh, get the process like uh, we must uh, download some data set uh, from uh, Earth Explorer, Earth Explorer, Giovanni, uh, and suppose like we uh, download some data set from Giovanni and Earth Explorer, and then we process the data set into our uh, local uh, software like ArcGIS, uh, QGIS, and then we, um, uh, we try to get the results. Some uh, NDBI are yeah, different kind of uh, process we are trying to in Google, uh, uh, in our system. So, but uh, now Google gives us uh, one possible uh, option as uh, is Google Earth Engine platform, where we can uh, uh, easily process our data set in uh, in, a, in a second or in a, uh, in a minute. So, uh, I start the overview uh, of Google Earth Engine platform. Uh, so, what is the Google Earth Engine? Uh, Google Earth Engine is a geospatial processing uh, uh, service powered by Google Cloud Platform. And its goal uh, have two goals geographical data visualization and computation and local global uh, scale. And you can uh, have also, uh, have also goal of sensitive uh, global challenges that involve large geospatial data set. You can visualize your uh, global data and local data and you can process. Um, any kind of data, so, uh, suppose you are a set, data set, what is data set, uh, climate data set, you can process um, in Google Earth Engine platform. Also, the Google have a mission uh, to organize the world in promotion and make the universal accessible and usable for us. Sometimes uh, in uh, our past, our uh, uh, previous uh, traditional method, we have never limited power some uh, uh, by our software. Suppose uh, uh, if every person have a RGS software, then we uh, can process that uh, data set by their own uh, 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 software. But Google uh, give us the one open access platform where anybody can access the data set and process their own method. Uh, uh, and Google, I think it has three or uh, four components, like first of a paper set, and uh, second is compute engine, and third is API platform, second is platform. Uh, so data, data set have a messy data catalog, where you can find last uh, beta scale, uh, beta byte scale catalog, like you can use of uh, the Alansa data set, Morris data set, uh, climate data set, uh, any kind of data set you are, uh, you will, uh, exploring this data catalog platform and and this is a complete engine part. Uh, it takes a uh, um, data, uh, data, uh, data set from data catalog platform and then execute our uh, uh, demand. Suppose we are trying to do any NDBI computation and any bandwidth, any kind of uh, processing you can do by the computing engine. And second, there is the API platform. You can by the uh, command, by your algorithm method, whatever you are uh, trying to get in Google Earth Engine, you can write it in uh, two platforms. Uh, one is the JavaScript, sorry, G platform, JavaScript, Python, and REST API platform. And second is apps, uh, which have a uh, where a user can uh, build their own algorithm and method and, and uh, publish in the um, publicly available for. Uh, yeah, for the algorithm and result and research. You can find the details in uh, about the, all the component, even uh, check the uh, link. Uh, there is a different type of uh, data catalog uh, I have discussed. The Landsat Sentinel data set you can 40 years as if uh, you can get uh, and what is data set, Terry and land data set you can, uh, and weather and climate data will get from data catalogs uh, into platform. You do not need to download all the data set in your local system. You can also data set in your program and you can finally uh, uh, get your uh, result what you want. 
Uh, you can find this uh, data catalog from this uh, link I have uh, attached to the presentation. Uh, uh, yes, uh, this is the uh, three platforms. This one is JavaScript, and second is Python API, and one is the REST API. Uh, API. Uh, this is the JavaScript platform where it's a, in the server page. Uh, you can write your code in, uh, in directly in your uh, Google page. Uh, suppose you try to call some uh, Lancer data set or Nordic data set, you can directly call your JavaScript platform and it uh, send their uh, request in, in the Google form <coughs> uh, uh, send the result in your uh, local, uh, local system. And second is a Python uh, API platform which is similar to JavaScript, uh, but uh, it, uh, uh, it calls the as uh, uh, Google API in Python uh, Python platform by their authentication and in some REST API where you can quickly uh, uh, write your comment in HTTP format. First, JavaScript platform and then you can go for Python API. Uh, yes, obviously you can uh, you can build your own uh, app like uh, you can uh, you can suppose you have built any algorithm or uh, any NDBI map. Yes, uh, you can uh, share it uh, for view uh, the uh, result in quick manners. Uh, uh, you can uh, app, but yes. Uh, what can we do? Uh, we can visualize the dataset, map, chart, animation. We can do in uh, visualize uh, uh, computation. Uh, computation is a part pixel. You can uh, compute the part pixel uh, 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 computational algorithms such as band math or in DBI, any kind of uh, comp uh, computation uh, we can turn in with the platform. We can do the classification, regression, uh, division, space time segment, uh, uh, segmentation, element analysis, time series uh, analysis, and we can build also the interactive map, and we can also uh, import our uh, local data, data set, and also uh, export our result easily in the platform. I will, I will show all the, uh, all the, uh, all the uh, example uh, in the hands-on. Uh, but uh, this is one of the example of visualization that have uh, built by Dustin Barton, who is a Google developer, uh, who has uh, built this uh, animation um, in over the Africa. And Google I think, have a uh, different function and their uh, uh, type. Those uh, in a single uh, single image have some. Uh, Function bandwidth clip and convolution, neighborhood selection, and image collection. You, you can use a dot map aggregation function and filter music and different kind of function you can use. Machine learning, we can uh, the card track of voice, uh, SDN uh, projection. So, in Google, uh, uh, in data data, we can say as a feature, feature or feature collection, suppose line, point, and polygon. Uh, we can say uh, as, a, as a feature or uh, the uh, number of uh, lines uh, we can uh, lines shape by we can add uh, second uh, we have uh, we can uh, suppose we have a single lens data set and there are uh, suppose uh, uh, suppose five or four band an individual band are uh, stacked in uh, in different uh, properties and their data are bounded in box. And all the, all the bands are a tag of element of table of feature. But suppose you, are, you have a four or five, uh, uh, suppose, the, uh, suppose you are a tag of the data set for 2019, uh, first January to uh, <laughs> And we can uh, use the register function from this uh, collection. You can, uh, we can easily make a uh, simple median image from this collection. Uh, this is a basic, basic uh, uh, overview or diagram how the uh, Google can reduce the images 
uh, in a single tile. Yes, the, this is the uh, simple uh, reducer function, math, uh, some uh, reducer function, how the reducer function are going back on the whole identity. It takes the sum, uh, it takes the corresponding pixel of different band and, uh, and sum their uh, result with a single master band. Similarly, they uh, do the uh, similar in the, the labeling process. Suppose, uh, uh, and filter, you can use the bundled uh, uh, um, the ZMS collection uh, is, is uh, it's produced like uh, as like events. Over you have a three collection, and you are need to uh, you are going to uh, going to produce the median image of this collection, and it will uh, uh, it will uh, reduce this uh, life of image of this area. And you guys use the region uh, 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 on shape file, and uh, we are trying to uh, get the uh, uh, information about the uh, 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 region. You will get the uh, corresponding band information of this uh, region. And you can also use the multiple uh, region. Uh, for this uh, uh, analysis, and you can also use a, a, a local or your uh, uh, self uh, uh, shape file. And you can uh, input in your Google Athenian platform, and you can uh, use your user region function to get the corresponding value. And uh, that is general statistic. Similarly, uh, you can use uh, the bandwidth function. Similarly, suppose uh, there is a simple example of band. Uh, uh, the band map. Uh, here we try to sum uh, uh, some of the collection. Oh, this is a first uh, first uh, collection and the second collection. And it's uh, it to sum uh, the whole of this corresponding first uh, and it generates the sum of uh, band. And there is a simple uh, demo code of Google Earth Engine. Here you show the, the simple uh, the key classifier. Uh, suppose in uh, 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 platform are different uh, packages. Uh, 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 suppose uh, we are trying to call the classifier uh, classification technique. So we need to call uh, is our package in package and uh, in, in, in their classifier function. And we can easily uh, 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 classify the images in quick manner. And uh, we only have uh, some uh, scale and projection properties in your uh, output result. This is a slightly different from our uh, um, uh, local geospatial uh, uh, or the software or something or other geospatial software processing. There is a simple uh, command of Google Earth Engine. Suppose we are trying to add um, a few images in uh, a Google Earth Engine platform. So we will be one minute. I, if, I think you have uh, opened two machines, two systems. It's um, um, picking up a lot of noises. Okay. Are you using two, 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 uh, two systems side by side? No, no. Uh, it is showing that there are two, two uh, bigger guns. It's creating a lot of noise. Yes, sir. There, there is a going and that much both that background noise. Okay. Okay, carry on. much more backward background noise. Nice noise. Okay. Uh, in Google Athenian platform, we can easily uh, add, suppose, add two images. Uh, you know, suppose uh, we need to call for single image, we can need to call ee.img and you use the uh, add function. Is the, is the function where we, uh, based on this function, we can add two images simply. Uh, and uh, e dot e, 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 collection, which are uh, which are used for our a number of uh, uh, collection of data sets. Suppose we are going to uh, call the uh, 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 YAML data or Mandi data, so we need to call e image collection function to call the all uh, data set. And uh, from this collection, we can uh, use the dot median function uh, that I discussed. Um, uh, we can use the um, uh, median uh, reducer or 
a mean reducer or some reducer you can use in a collection and you can use the e dot feature uh, it is uh, it is used for the single shape file or uh, point shape file or polygon shape file based on the shape file you can uh, use a different uh, feature uh, feature uh, method suppose centroid path or or in uh, uh, you can use in in, in the feature uh, function based on this function and second is e feature collection similar as uh, the uh, the e feature but where you can and call a number of shape file in a in a in a single collection you can uh, start from this uh, the, uh, link for better basically i try to show the what the going on between the uh, our client to google analytics platform is just uh, is a client you know, client platform there we try to write our code and second is the uh, google analytics uh, platform where we complete our result basically here i write our uh, comment suppose we are trying to do an api so so we would write their comment in, in in javascript platform in google page and that it uh, it our take our request and and send it google at the platform google at the platform uh, have uh, some uh, multiple computational system that our complete our uh, request and we send our response in our local client server and we can uh, our uh, we can visualize our result or show our result in our local machine without using our local uh, machine system without using our local suppose we, we, we not use your local system or ram or any anything in your system uh google athena have two uh, different type of uh, computational mode uh, one is interactive mode and second is batch mode uh, it is uh, uh, in, in, in this interactive mode we can uh, uh, we can run simple uh, uh, algorithm suppose your collection uh, your type collection all uh, the set image in in west bengal and you try to compute the ngbi you can do it in your batch uh, interactive mode uh, in in your system but you are going to for large scale uh, spatial data analysis so we need to uh, go for batch mode computational uh, mode that it can uh, uh, for this uh, computation uh, it use a number of uh, virtual machine uh, in, uh, in in this computational process okay uh, so i uh, i i go for the hands on on google engine platform then uh, i think uh, participant can understand what i uh, what i intend to Uh, say and what uh, our Google Athena will give the uh, special option for uh, us to process our special data in quickly manners. So I request if you have any uh, doubt and theoretically, then uh, ask me about that. Uh, i will go for technical session so uh, i request all the participants yeah uh, if you have a uh, google engine uh, id so please uh, try to log in your um, uh, google uh, google page and i have already sent uh, to uh, skipped uh, in chat box So in first quote, I have to, uh, in the first quote I have to just share our uh, demonst uh, demonstration code uh, from we can uh, uh, learn how the Google Ads are process are going on. So first I introduce the Google Ads platform uh, and their function and who is uh, uh, what is the. Uh, Uh, component of this uh, platform. So this is the script platform where you can write your code and save in this uh, in this uh, uh, in this uh, directory. Suppose I have a uh, I have a user by email uh, ID and you can make a folder. You can save your uh, code and this is a docs function document. You can find your different algorithm 
and uh, uh, classifier or map, different different function you can search in from this docs function. And this is our assist uh, where you can upload our uh, data set in the local directory. From a local directory, you can upload your data set. And uh, uh, this is our uh, data catalog platform where you can search uh, any type of data set, suppose Landsat, uh, uh, Landsat data 8. You can easily find this data set from this, uh, sorry. You can find the data set from this uh, catalog platform. You can uh, uh, go for it. You can take the, all the data set is there. And uh, this is uh, the code section where you can write your code and you can execute execute by the run function. And uh, this is the app uh, build function. You can uh, build your app and share from this app uh, uh, option. And this is the inspector. You can uh, check the result of your uh, platform. You can find their uh, uh, result of corresponding location. And it is a task bar where you can uh, check the uh, uh, export output uh, or input um, uh, status of your result. So basically, uh, I have uh, imported my uh, corresponding uh, my local shift file uh, uh, in via. Uh, Suppose uh, you can upload your data set uh, from from assist. You can upload your data set in format in Latin form. You can upload the shift file. You can upload your CSV file. Uh, so uh, in in this case, uh, we upload the shape file by shape file upload. Uh, we will select our shape file directory by our uh, mainly shape file, and we select it corresponding uh, um, uh, .ssp, .b, uh, .dbf, .prg, .ssp, uh, .ssx. It supported uh, shape file for Google Earth Engine. We can upload from uh, it. And there are the different uh, drawing tools. You can uh, you can uh, 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 move your um, background, and you can uh, make the point shape file. Uh, you can um, draw your line, uh, etc. You can make the polygon uh, rectangular. You can build your uh, polygon shape file. So basically, uh, I have uh, already uploaded uh, upload my uh, data set, uh, set file in uh, in my assist. So uh, I call in a, in a, as a uh, table. I just call the my shape file. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, the arrow sign where you can, uh, uh, you can click on this uh, arrow sign, you can easily import your uh, shape file in, uh, in your platform. Suppose I have a shape file, uh, um, so I easily import on this uh, uh, asset. So I have already, already, I have already on shape file, so I just remove my, uh, uh, this uh, shape file. In this uh, case, I call my, uh, you can uh, call in code editor by feature collection, your shape file. Suppose uh, uh, in my JFG user, like uh, one, two, three, and West Bengal, and based on this directory, uh, uh, we call our uh, uh, shape file in our main, uh, main direct, uh, code editor function. We call simply we call the uh, call our shape file by dot ee 
the, the to feature collection and we import the shape file in our editor and we try to filter uh, some shape file suppose in our shape file have different attribute like fid id and then uh, we can easily filter our uh, filter our data set by the attribute uh, attribute properties suppose uh, in my data set have a, uh, have a name attribute and i try to uh, filter two boundaries of my shape file suppose we mindapur and bankura and puria so we can easily filter our data set uh, from our uh, main shape file and uh, this is the filter function uh, where it, uh, where based on this uh, uh, filter function we have filter our data set and uh, we can use the union function we can easily union our data set And uh, this is the buffer polygon function where we we'll use the feature dot buffer, feature dot buffer, and we make the buffer of five thousand meter uh, 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 meter of buffer. So uh, it can generate uh, the uh, buffer around the, our shape file boundary. So simply we can write the feature dot buffer. You can uh, you can get the buffer uh, in our corresponding uh, shape file. And second, we can uh, use uh, visualize our data set by map or add layer. Uh, suppose my uh, shape file is filter area. Uh, you can uh, you can put in your filter area. You got that uh, filter area function, uh, parameter function. And you can visualize. Uh, you can put your visualization parameter, and you can assign your name. Uh, you can visualize their uh, uh, shape file in the import editor platform. Suppose my visualization parameter is, uh, and I'm like D D I I C that uh, shape file in the import editor platform. And Second thing, uh, uh, I have used the map dot center object. Uh, uh, based on this function, uh, I can set my position of this uh, map. Suppose let me delete my some object polygon. Based on this function, you can uh, set your position of your map, uh, and you, do, uh, you can zoom your uh, map scale. Suppose you are going to a more zooming scale, so you can set their uh, regular uh, zooming scale seven, ten, or five. Uh, you can uh, you can go for more detailing in local uh, scale. Okay, this is simple uh, example for 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 uh, shape file uh, or big data analysis. But we are focusing uh, focusing on uh, satellite data set. How I call, uh, how we call the data set for in Google Earth Engine uh, platform. Basically, for this uh, we use this uh, comment uh, how to call the data set in uh, Google Earth Engine platform. Suppose we try to call the landsat uh, eight or landsat uh, uh, eight data set, Q data set or surface dependent data set. We can easily call by this comment e dot image collection landsat and um, if you got this information from data catalog uh, data catalog suppose you are trying to call the uh, specific data set like landsat data set you can easily go for this uh, platform you can check how the call on the all the data set from a specific uh, uh, edge. You can use the uh, surface reference data, you can call the top of the person's data, you can call what is data, everything you can uh, call uh, your platform like this. 
uh, and you can filter uh, bound you can filter the uh, your, your data set suppose you are you are tagged with all your data set in between your uh, in between your uh, area suppose you you are tagged with all the images you know in west bengal area so it, it will call all the images in, in between the west bengal boundary and you can filter your data set uh, suppose you are uh, tagged with all at the zone 16 to first, uh, first month to uh, zone 19 Uh, 11 month data set. It can filter the, all the data set in between the date. Uh, you can call the single raster file. Uh, you can call the single raster file by uh, I call the e dot image. And uh, I, I just um, add some uh, function uh, divided is a scale factor for these images. Uh, so it uh, you can call uh, like this image, and you can clip your uh, clip the data set uh, 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 by dot clip function. You can uh, use the dot clip function, and you can use the normalize function to get an NDVI value from this uh, 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 data set. Okay. Simply, I call the uh, specific uh, time uh, in our uh, study area, and I simply uh, uh, use the clip function to clip uh, the images by our shape file. Uh, uh, image dot clip. Uh, uh, it is our shape file, and then we uh, use the normalization function. Normalize difference function is uh, is NDVI. It's simply uh, divided uh, divided by uh, red channel, and uh, based on this function, we can get the NDVI images in our uh, local in uh, in the uh, study area. You can uh, you can build your custom uh, uh, indexes or function uh, by uh, by type uh, uh, image dot expression. You can write uh, like this uh, your custom uh, uh, any any indices. Suppose the PCI, SPI, EBI, and uh, 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 ATWI. You can uh, you can use this dot expression function to, uh, to build your custom uh, indices. i will share the code uh, about all the uh, 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 all the uh, all the what's going on comment so you can uh, you can run this uh, comment one by one and check the result Okay. Uh, in uh, in this section, we visualize our uh, uh, simple single Landsat data uh, by their uh, corresponding band visualization properties. 
suppose you are trying to visualize your single image uh, you can use uh, put your uh, single image in 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 this position and you can use uh, uh, make a dictionary uh, for visualization your uh, uh, raster data this is the uh, visualization this is a visualization properties of, uh, of of map layer and this is name of this layer uh, you can check the uh, image of this area This is the uh, uh, main uh, raster file of our uh, um, study area. Um, we use the uh, blue color composition by uh, set the position of the band before and uh, then we uh, set the band three and uh, band two. Uh, P two is uh, our uh, blue channel and the green channel and red channel. Based on this combination, we visualize our single raster data uh, in a, in this platform. And also visualize our sing, uh, output of NDVI data in uh, this data layer function. And based on this uh, condition, we can also uh, uh, extract our um, uh, uh, NDVI data. Suppose we are trying to extract the uh, NDVI greater than 0.5, you can use simply NDVI dot GTE. It is a function is Greater than equal function. Based on the function, you can uh, uh, extract the um, uh, NDVI among uh, greater than equal to zero point five. So this is simply uh, greater than NDVI zero point five. So I request all the participants. Uh, you can try yourself. I I I, I have already uh, uh, sent the script in chat box. Please um, uh, ch uh, check the uh, comment or whatever I run in in my code editor. If uh, simply I uh, I just, uh, so the export function. You can also use the export function. Uh, suppose you are trying to uh, export the result. Uh, it's suppose uh, this is a, this is your um, uh, suppose this is a, uh, this is your result of uh, of this analysis. Uh, you can export this result by type the export dot image dot to drive. It take the image in your result. Suppose it's a result, uh, and this you can put the description of name. Suppose you are trying to put the name of any marks value. And this is the scale, this is the resolution, spatial resolution of the eye images and region. And uh, uh, it in it put uh, uh, your study area uh, and file format in which format you want to export your uh, data set. You can use the geotip format. Uh, uh, there, uh, there is a other function, max pixel. Uh, Google sometimes requires that maximum uh, pixel capacity. Suppose again, you have uh, uh, there's a uh, 30 meter resolution image, so we need to put uh, maximum pixel at one to nine. So that's uh, by this run. So we uh, sorry. Okay, uh, based on this code, uh, it's saying the uh, export result of NDVI or of our result. You can uh, simply uh, run this uh, comment, it, uh, it will send the result in your Google Drive. It is just, uh, just processing your result, or sending your result in your Google Drive.
uh, i think you will take some time to export uh, the result so i uh, i go for next comment how are we going uh, 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 you can uh, call the collection of image by the image collection function that I have told previously. You can use the collection function. Suppose you are trying to call the Landsat image collection, you need to call e dot image collection, and you must try to find a filter your data set uh, for your study area. You can put your study area uh, in, uh, in filter down function, and you suppose you are trying to filter your uh, data set by the the and uh, uh, um, your limited, as uh, we are trying to call the data set from 2016 to 2019, you can call my filter date function. And there is another function, uh, is my um, cloud max function. Google also will give us uh, one of the possible options is the cloud max function. You can, you can easily cloud max your data set by function uh, max it takes some uh, pixel, uh, pixel quality pan and try to uh, try to uh, uh, find the cloud bit uh, image and it uh, marks your uh, Google uh, pixel from cloud. I have uh, uh, 473 uh, images in our study area. Uh, so there is a corresponding um, the details of this uh, tiles. Uh, you can see the uh, individual uh, band properties and the uh, system properties. Uh, simply, I just use the dot uh, dot mean reducer function that I told uh, in uh, in the slide. Uh, what I do? Suppose we were trying to uh, make the uh, uh, single uh, image collection to median image. Uh, it, it just take the uh, all the images in your collection and uh, generate your median image for this time period. That I have done in in the simple collection method. Simply uh, to make the collection and dot uh, use the dot median function and it is uh, generate our uh, median image for this study area between the time period of 2016 to 2019 uh, uh, period. And we simply uh, uh, make a, a, um, a list in this collection to uh, a list for, for visualization. We simply visualize our uh, data set uh, uh, of this uh, study area. And this is a median image for, for 2016 to 2019 uh, uh, data collection. And we can also uh, we, we can make a simple a chart uh, for this uh, region simply. Uh, in this function, it uh, take the collection of images. Suppose, uh, it, it take the collection of images of your study area, and uh, we already said the function for NDVI uh, is just we use the function. Uh, uh, we made the function for the uh, uh, collection of images. Uh, 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 suppose we are trying to calculate the NDVI uh, for this uh, for the for the all the images. 
So we need to write one simple function to calculate the NDVI for individual band. Uh, so, uh, so therefore we need uh, we make our simple function dot add dot NDVI function. Based on this function, it uh, it can uh, generate the NDVI image for the image. And based on this image, we select uh, the uh, NDVI band uh, for corresponding date. And uh, we we try to uh, reduce the mean uh, image for this. Uh, for this region and plot the uh, plot the uh, mean value over this time, and simply we can easily uh, get the time series uh, NDVI value over this region and in a quick in a, in a single click we can check the NDVI value over this region. So this is a simple. Uh, a demonstration of polar thinking, but I think uh, uh, not a sufficient part um, this uh, polar thinking uh, execution. It may take more time to execute all the part of the comment to check the what are going on during the uh, comment. So I like to, uh, to go. I like to go for the uh, sending for sending script, but this time. Uh, uh, from this view, you can try to run your code one by one. If you have any problem, then you can uh, and contact with me. I will try to, uh, to uh, help you for for education. And this is a simple in the JavaScript platform. You can also use the Colab platform that I have just uh, told. I can, I have similar. I have used a similar uh, function. I put the similar function in Python environment. You can use the Colab function. Uh, there is a simple demonstration of a Python platform. You can use the simple Python. And one is the simple, uh, it is a, uh, I, have, I have built in my, uh, in my PhD for COVID situation. It's a simple, uh, simple app for uh, uh, for visualization. The, uh, the pollution level of NO2 over the China, there is a uh, scenario, and you can make your own custom app for your publicly available for any your research. You can, you can uh, share your uh, result in publicly. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you for a nice demonstration. Um, I um, the Participants, you may ask a question now. Hello. If you have any query, you may post your question in the chat box. All the quotes shown uh, by him will be shared to you via email. So that uh, you can try it when you will be free. And you can just work with the Google engine, play with this uh, web-based platform for accessing data and uh, analyzing the data for different purpose. Uh, hello, hello, Anish sir. You, uh, I have shared the code for the uh, script. This is not a uh, logging, uh, logging, idea, uh, logging platform. I just share my code by getting uh, function. So this is a fun, uh, script link, not in Google Earth Engine logging in uh, link. So you need to first make your Google Earth Engine uh, uh, account in your Google, uh, then you can use your our script, or you can use the directly collab function, collab script. Vijay, can you please uh, show us uh, how to create Google Earth Engine account directly from Google? So that the students um, can easily uh, log in and uh, then start their work. Okay, uh, from this for this uh, we can use simply uh, go this. Uh, you can sign up this. You can use this thing. Um, suppose I try to log out myself to the
Hello, Bijo, your screen is not visible. Ma'am, Bijo has left the meeting. Okay, just he is out of meeting. Okay, just. Uh, I have the, already. I have a Google account. Google account. Uh, Google Indian account. So I cannot uh, make the Google Indian account in my new uh, Polaris account. Uh, so I request to go for this. Uh, go uh, from this link. You can easily sign up for uh, Google Indian. This is a simple process. This is nothing but. Any, any complicated uh, complicated sign up process. You can simply uh, go for the sign up uh, in Google Athena platform. You can uh, get the code editor function. After the sign up, you can simply type the Google Athena code editor. Okay, any code questions editor. from uh, the participants? Um, so thank you, Vijay. Uh, then um, we will start our next demonstration session. This session will be conducted by uh, Mr. Onimesh Chaudhary, um, uh, JRF of DST SCRB project in our department. He will show you um, the codes, how to use the codes for um, the drought mo for drought modeling and early one. So. Uh, as we know that there are different softwares, uh, professional commercial softwares available, and uh, we use frequently for uh, this uh, for different kind of analysis. But uh, here, this Google Earth Engine uh, web-based platform can be used for uh, preparing drought maps, and we can also uh, identify the years with severe drought, moderate drought through different vegetation indices. So let's start the. Uh, uh, last session of this uh, program. Uh, so uh, please, Onimesh, uh, continue your demonstration. Over to Onimesh. Onimesh, your is your sound. Maybe his microphone is off.
Dear participants, please wait for a few minutes. We have an issue with the microphone. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. sorry for the interruption. There's a, some technical glitch uh, in the system. So, thanks for waiting. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dr. Dipendra Dutta, for, uh, for uh, this session. Uh, this is the last, the last session, so thanks for waiting uh, this long. Uh, so, I will demonstrate. Uh, some of the uh, Google Earth uh, uh, codes and uh, Bija has already given some uh, overview regarding the Google Earth Engine platform. Uh, so, uh, I will try to uh, uh, do some basic things. So, we do. Uh, so uh, I hope you are uh, you can see my screen. So I, I will try to uh, uh, do some basic uh, stuff. So so that uh, those who have already uh, familiar with the Google Earth Engine can run the code. If you have the uh, login ID and password, you can run along with me. And if you don't, don't worry about that. Uh, you will uh, get to know very easily. Okay, so from uh, Google, you can search uh, Google Earth Engine uh, documentation. And you will uh, get to the page. Okay. 
So here you, this is the, this is the, you can say the viable for learning Google Ads Engine platform. So from here you will find a lot of uh, things, a uh, lot of study material, lot of quotes. Uh, so um, you can, you should uh, guide the site. So here you see in the uh, guide uh, tab, you will see various API tutorial. So I will demonstrate one of the tutorial and uh, try to discuss how to uh, manipulate the code and how to use it for uh, your purpose. Basically, in most of the cases, uh, uh, you don't have to start uh, writing your own code from the very scratch. So you will uh, find <coughs> certain amount of code uh, or example of code that, will, uh, that you need to utilize uh, according to your uh, objective or according to your need. So in, uh, in this session, so we have mainly talked about drought and drought forecasting. So uh, we will uh, try to focus our objective on drought. So, so here in the API tutorial, if you go to the Earth Engine API tab, you will see that NDBI mapping uh, this code. Okay. So we will try to run the code. So just to open another uh, code editor, you need to write the uh, link here. So there is a, another uh, code editor. So this is the code editor where you can execute the code uh, accordingly. So this is the code. Copy the code and paste the code. And to run the code, you just hit the run button. So here uh, in the code, there is no <coughs> sorry, there is uh, no um, output because we haven't done any output. So, in the first line of code, this is the point. This is the e e geometry dot point, and this is the longitude, and this is the latitude. So, uh, longitude and latitude, and uh, this is the point function. So, if we want to see, suppose if you want to see where the map actually uh, the point is, so you need to type map dot and there. And then the point. So if you run the code, you will see the point here. So this is the point actually. So this is the way we need to uh, build our code. We need to do map dot add layer and print uh, several times so that what actually the code is doing. To visualize what actually the code is doing, we need to do these things. Another is thinking, suppose uh, in this case we know what the latitude and longitude are, but suppose we don't know what the latitude and longitude of the location. So what can we do? So we need to go uh, to the, suppose uh, we want to do, we want to do, so we can create a point from here, we can create a point here like this or we can uh, import it from this one. So suppose. Suppose you have a, usually uh, people like us uh, uh, usually use the save file format. So in case of save file, we have several uh, auxiliary formatter dot .prj, dot .shp, dot .auf. So just, just zip all the files related to those save files and then import it using this. So when you upload that, you, you will have an asset and you can share the asset with anyone uh, who has a Google Ads platform. So let's just suppose, and you can rename it. Suppose we are giving point name and we are deleting this one. So next line is that LA difficulty e e image dot collection. So this is the image collection, which is the lands and top of atmosphere, uh, uh, top of atmosphere image collection. So 
to find out the uh, image collection, you will just uh, suddenly meet the uh, ID and search for the book. So this is the top of atmosphere reflection. Suppose you don't need, uh, don't know where the actually this ID came from. So this is the actual ID we are using. So you can use, suppose you don't need Landsat 8 uh, top of atmosphere, you need someone, uh, something else, something else like uh, Sentinel or Modis data set. So you can use this thing uh, to import that data set. Suppose you need any other, suppose Sentinel. You will see several Rasta data set. So you can uh, import the data set from here. Next, <coughs> what we are doing? We have the we are getting the least cloudy pixel from 2015. So here we are using e dot image function. We are uh, using the point. We, we have created the point and we are using that point to select the images within uh, 2015 January to 2015 uh, December. So you see, uh, in, in during this time frame, all the uh, Landsat 8 top of atmosphere images are selected and we sort it according to the cloud cover percentage. And then we take the first image. When we sort it according to the cloud cover images and when we take the first image of that uh, sorted uh, L8 images, so we take the least cloud cover image. Now, suppose we want to uh, visualize what, what is the image. We want to visualize the image that we have already selected. This map dot add layer, and this is the image. So this is the image. From here you can change the opacity and also uh, the various uh, different uh, visualization scheme you can use. You can uh, use palette or gamma or you can use gray band. So this you need to explore more. So we can see the images. Suppose we need to see all the images from the LA L8, uh, the image collection that we are using. So, for that, we need print So, here you can see the console in the console panel, whatever we do in the print, print uh, with print comment, it will come in the console panel. So, it takes more than 5000 elements. So that's why it's not uh, giving us the uh, result. So we need to little bit reduce the images, suppose for only January if we take. So it, it take actually this image, suppose uh, we want to see the Now we are taking a so uh, this is the image we are we are getting. So this is the image collection that is actually from January January month. And these are the images. You can see the feature. There are four images, and you can assign the dates of the images from here. This is the tenth uh, January, the twenty sixth January. These are two images, and and the different brands are also mentioned here. Okay, and from different uh, here here is the cloud cover percentage. So uh, we actually. Uh, 
sorted the uh, all the images image collection according to this so cloud cover percentage so this is how we can uh, actually uh, use the information to change and uh, manipulate our code so we we need to run the code several times we change, we make changes and we run the code again and we see what are the actually changes so this is how you actually need to learn how this code and script are uh, actually working so next uh, let's go to the code editor so uh, we have selected So we have selected uh, from uh, 2015 January to 2000 December uh, in all the landscape images and sorted according to the cloud cover and we take the first one. So, so we get the image and we have already seen the image. Now go to the next part of the thing. Now we will. Uh, there are several uh, vegetation based indices that had been used for years uh, in uh, evaluating the uh, doubt condition. And NDI is one of the most uh, well-used uh, vegetation indices. Now, the use of digital indices for most of the vegetation indices are used mainly to highlight the vegetation cover. To highlight the vegetation cover in the satellite images. And all of them have certain uh, limitations to them. Now, most of them, uh, we, we, are, we have selected NDI because it's very easy and uh, well-established and uh, used by several researcher for uh, doubt monitoring. So, if you go to the code, copy the code from here. And okay. So, this is the NIR band. This is the band 5 in L8. So, we are getting image dot image. So, image is a uh, image is a uh, first image that is the least cloudy pixel. We are taking the least cloudy pixel, uh, least cloudy image. So we are taking the NIR band, red band, and we are computing the NDVI. So NIR dot subject red. So we are basically NIR minus R or NIR divided by NIR plus R. We are doing that only. So this is the NDVI. And then we display the image with the visual parameters like blue, white, and red, green, red, and map dot at here, we are taking the image. Let's run the code and see what actually it's happening. So this is the actually NDVI. Image. Brand side NDVA least cloudy, and you can see that uh, the image is from the date of the image. It's 25th January 2015. So you can see the NDVA. Now, this, this is not the only way you can compute NDVA. There are other several ways. Uh, uh, the way you can uh, actually compute NDVA. There is an inbuilt function, normalized different, which I'm going to show now. So here you can see the normalized function. Okay. So now let's change it. Suppose we are giving it a name, NDVI1. So, we, we have uh, computed the NDVI like this and we have also computed the NDVI with the normalized difference function. So, both of them should give similar, similar result and then we will check, uh, check uh, either they are giving similar result or they are giving different result. So, we, have, uh, we will uh, map the two uh, outputs and see either there is a, a difference or they are similar. So, the NDVI image is the this one and NDVI one is the later one, NDVI one. So you will see that both of them are actually similar. 
there is no difference between them so this normalized different function is actually uh, what they do this is the two band band by band, band code, but suppose you want to uh, calculate a normalized different in not ndgi but ndsa normalized different slow index so in that case you you will use uh, the short wave infrared band and the green band so uh, calculate the ndsa so any normalized different different vegetation index or any normalized different index you can compute from <coughs> this uh, with this with this function okay next uh, let's go to the tutorial now suppose we have here we have calculated that uh, ndk for one image but in uh, actual purpose uh, in actual case scenario what we want to do we, want, we usually want to compute the ndk for a longer period of time or for a certain period of time or we want the ndk time series you can say so so that we can change how the ndk changes uh, over the uh, during the certain period of time so in this case we need a function where uh, it will take image and it will uh, take it will take the image and it will take the it will compute the ndk for each image and then we will plot the time series so for that we need a function so we will build a function so usually uh, usually in other language like python or matlab we help we have usually have the if else or for uh, statement for looping but in case of javascript we usually use, use the map function so map function actually what it does, what it does it actually uh, it actually uh, loop over the different type of image so here we have a function called add ndk which is a function which takes image as an input okay and then it takes the normalized difference of that to input that and it gives a return image and ndgi okay so in case in this case if you see there are 11 bands okay but no ndgi anyway, but when we do ndgi add ndgi image we will have another band called ndgi so let's uh, run it and check that for a single image if it, if it's coming or not so for that we again print Me, so here we will see eleven bands, and here we will see only the NDVI band because we have only selected the NDVI band. Okay, so this is how. So how about the function we have? Uh, actually we we used it for a single image now we will uh, we check that our function is working fine so we can use that function on a image collection so what where is our image collection our image collection is l8 so this is our image collection so we can use that on our image collection and again print So actually, it's not uh, coming out because of it takes five thousand plus element. So we need to actually let take it for one. So this this type of error will come, and you have to 
solve this error and uh, you have to find a way to so that he, this uh, will run Okay, so actually uh, this is not working because of the slow internet connection and uh, these are coming because i have actually commented out Let's see Okay, let's uh, let go. We will we will check it uh, other other. So So it's actually taking uh, more uh, less than uh, five thousand elements. That's why it's not coming. We need to do filter out the date. Okay. Uh, to uh, understand this, uh, let's uh, come to another uh, code that I have shifted. Uh, this is actually not coming, and because of shortage of the time, I am not uh, doing it and corrected it. Okay. So actually, uh, we need to give uh, time foundation here so that a five thousand less than five thousand element is selected, and then if we run the code, it will come. But uh, it will take a little bit time, so I don't want to waste time. And let's uh, move forward. Okay. So here, what we will do, uh, we will try to um, uh, compute the VCI uh, of, of uh, landsat imagery of our study area. So we have already made a function. So uh, where NDVI image dot uh, VCI is uh, computed on the NDVI uh, value. So we have uh, uh, select the NDVI band, and this is we have used the MODIS dataset. If we select the dataset, this is actually. NDVI product, which is uh, given the NDVI uh, for a longer period of time, uh, 
So this is the NDVI normalized digitization index. This is the mean value and this is the mean max value. So we see a little bit about the code. So the, there is a scaling factor. Uh, there is a scaling factor of 0 0.001 that we need to use, and there is the NDVI band. So we are using this band, uh, using this image collection. So here we have used that image collection that was uh, that was uh, that I was trying to show you. Where we have used the image collection, and we selected the band NDVI band that I have already uh, recently so, uh, showed you, and then we uh, showed the we filter the image according to 2000 to 2009. So there is a 20 year so image are selected, and we filter bound according to the table. Now table is the uh, here we have used uh, this is the asset that I have used study area. Now if you want to see the uh, table only, uh, we, I will show you what is the actually uh, the study area. So first run the code. See if there is any error or something, then we will try to uh, explain the code. So here we will see. That uh, the first print function print is the print data set. Now data set is data set dot collection dot select is equal to one. So this is the data set. So collection. So what is the collection? Collection is the uh, twenty years of modic NDVI data. So if you see, these are the data set. Twenty years of modic NDVI data set for the whole world. Okay. Then we have selected a data set and we have printed the data set. Now uh, we have uh, from the uh, data set we have selected the monthly NDVI. So monthly NDVI, so June monthly NDVI, we have selected the filter and calendar range is equal to six. The starting range is six, end range is six, and it is on the month basis. So it gives us all the uh, July, uh, June NDVI. Similarly, July NDVI, August NDVI, September NDVI, and October NDVI. So we have calculated this uh, uh, monthly on the monthly basis. Now to calculate the uh, EVI, we need the NDVI max and NDVI mean. So for June month NDVI, we have selected the June NDVI dot max. The max function is used to find the maximum value of uh, the pixel. So we have 20 years of data set. So 20 years of data set, which what are the maximum value of a single pixel uh, we get with the max function. Similarly, this is uh, done for all the max, uh, all, all the month. So June, July, August, September, and October, all the months. And similarly, we have uh, computed the mean value. Mean value is computed by the mean function. So similarly, if you want to uh, find the average, so you can say you can use the dot mean, M-E-A-N, mean function. If you want to use the median, so in case of, uh, suppose uh, there is a, in a certain case, uh, for uh, suppose there is a, uh, there is cloud cover in most of the case, uh, cloudy pixels. So suppose you want to exclude the extreme value. So you use the median value. So median value will give, uh, give up the maximum number of observation in a certain range. So you can uh, exclude the cloudy value. Uh, so in that case, we use the median. Now to calculate the VCI, we again uh, use a function where we use the image function and then uh, uh, use this uh, VCI formula to compute the uh, VCI, uh, vegetation condition index. And then we compute the vegetation DCI uh, and ret uh, return and add demand is the DCI. So we have done that for the all the months. Let's check it. So here, if you see the band, it, it has scaled NDVI. Okay. So that was created. Similarly, if we go to the image galaxy band. There is a scale NDVI and also a VCI is appeared. So we want to compute the VCI. So uh, there is a scale NDVI and there is a VCI. So we have calculated both of them and for each and individual month.
Now suppose uh, we, for each month we have calculated the GCL and uh, <coughs> now we merge all the data sets. We, we can do it in another way. Suppose we don't uh, want to, uh, we want to, uh, we, uh, we want to take from June to October and don't want to segregate into monthly basis. So we can take the June to October data set only and then we can compute the run the But uh, our objective was to see what are the what is the condition of that uh, VCI in different month. So that's why we computed VCI separately for different month. So here we again uh, uh, merged all the VCIs. So for merge function, suppose we have a different kind of different uh, data set or different uh, observation. So you can always merge. You can you can always merge the two data set using the merge function, and so that you can uh, so after merging, it became say another image collection which which will have all all the data set. Now we sorted the time uh, sorted the uh, image collection according to the system time starts. So there is always a timestamp timestamp uh, in the image. So we are sorting this. Well, uh, in the previous example, we have, we sorted the uh, data set according to the cloud cover. But in this case, we have sorted the uh, data set according to the uh, timestamp. So uh, the images uh, that is captured uh, in 2000 will come before the images captured in 2019. Next, we plot the time series. We plot the PCI in uh, different times. So this is a interactive kind of map. So you can see uh, the VCI uh, September uh, 13, 2000, the VCI value is 50 to uh, 260. Now the explanation, uh, you, you can check here the VCI value explanation. Mm, uh, you can check in Google the VCI value explanation and you will see the, where the doubt is. So VCI less than and around 50 is considered as doubt, I think. So uh, here you see that uh, in uh, the October 31st, 2000, the PCI value is very less, uh, and this is this can be uh, considered as a drought drought time. Similarly, this is one again a drought, area. and this the PCI value is, you can consider the vegetation condition is very good in the higher value of PCI. So from this we can monitor the how the vegetation condition is. Uh, Changing over the uh, uh, over the uh, longer time period, and we can actually uh, see the what is actually the normal condition and what is actually the drought condition, and we can use the information in predicting in drought. Similarly, if we, if we see uh, that the different uh, way of plotting things, this is one of the way where we uh, longer uh, time period is plotted according to um, uh, the. PCI, and then uh, you can you can change the level, and you can. Also export in uh, you can see uh, you can download it in CSV downloaded it SV or downloaded it PNG and you can use uh, for uh, uh, high quality publication and another way of uh, suppose uh, I want to I want to see in each year how the VCI has changed so I have five months of data set five months June July August September right now so the data set so how the five months of uh, VCI changes according to each different year. So, if you see that how that uh, from 2000 to 2001, and here you can see 2000, 2000, uh, 2013 to 2013, how the VCI has gone up and down, up and down, and what is the pattern of VCI? Actually, what you can see what is the pattern of the VCI is there and how does it change over the time period for each year. So this is the way you can uh, understand how the uh, area actually, uh, the VCI of the area actually changing over the time period and you can understand the drought condition and drought scenario using the Google Earth Engine platform. So this is one way of explanation. You can also compute uh, various other uh, uh, indexes, vegetation indexes for monitoring the drought condition over different study period. Uh, so, um, my suggestion to the people who are using uh, Google Earth for the first time: don't try to uh, uh, don't try to uh, learn it uh, all, learn all of it at once. 
try to uh, explore the code try to understand the code and manipulate it according to your need everything uh, related to google ads engine is freely available there is a, the documentation and the video lectures are always uh, available in the youtube or other platform so you should uh, try to use it for yourself no matter how much so you Uh, watch YouTube videos or uh, how much you read ab- about the Google Ads Engine platform. You will not learn unless or until you use it uh, by yourself and uh, correcting by yourself. So suppose you find a problem, uh, you try to solve it by yourself. You use uh, Google, you search it, uh, you try to manipulate the code, check it and recheck it. Uh, you can also uh, join some. Uh, groups where Google are thinking, uh, Google uh, Google are thinking groups where uh, questions and discussions are all usually used. So use your uh, try to explore things and don't panic uh, about like uh, getting you know. Don't try to uh, learn everything. And uh, you will uh, by practicing uh, day and day out, you will uh, come to uh, you. It will be easy, easy for you if you uh, practice regularly, and uh, it will come to you eventually. So first, uh, try to run it uh, on this uh, Java API. Understand the code, and then then you can switch to any language you wish to uh, use, either Python or any other platform. So you will see, it. and this is very helpful because uh, in other cases, the way we have started, so RPI for AWS Imagine, we need to download a lot of uh, data set, and uh, we have to process it, and we. most of the student uh, we don't have license to do that so if you are a free uh, you want to open for access uh, of the this huge uh, number of uh, data set and uh, you want a huge number of processing power uh, so you should uh, use the google ads engine platform uh, and it is very helpful in uh, any any Objective you used to do so either it's a drought monitoring, either it's a agriculture, either it's a snow cover monitoring. So you can use it. Uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my session. Uh, and if you have any queries, please ask. Uh, you can also mail me or you can find me in LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Hello. Any question? Ma'am, your audio is off. I think. Okay, dear participants, if you have any query, you may um, you may uh, ask uh, Onimesh uh, directly, or you may post your comment to the chat box. we have uh, uh, professor shikantu kishor dev with us sir can you please um, say some words how was it how how did you feel the program hello uh, just to just to wait just to wait Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, your audio. Your audio. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, this this is a uh, good opportunity for all of us uh, to get introduced to the Google Ads Engine. And uh, uh, say say for example, those who are uh, those who are new to this platform, uh, they should get encouraged to go through the way Onimesh and Bijay has uh, told uh, and described. i think it will be a great uh, initiative uh, initiative or uh, initiative on their parts and also madam also arrange all these things uh, all this uh, presentation so i think this will uh, this will help our students to uh, get uh, them introduced or uh, with the google earth engine 
it's a very powerful uh, powerful uh, um, uh, tool and uh, uh, as you know and uh, i'm also trying my best to learn it but uh, i think i i have to take their help <laughs> they are student to get get it to it so i am going through all uh, i'm also going through the uh, different uh, uh, youtube videos and uh, help file but uh, not able to make much of uh, um, breakthrough till now because probably my gray hair i i think uh, young young people will get, uh, pick up very nicely and very quickly so best wishes to all the, all of you it's a very nice opportunity for everybody of us to uh, hear from you thank you thank you sir thank you for uh, being present uh, throughout this session and um, uh, participants from the participant side uh, if you have any uh, uh, feedback or if you have any uh, discussion we may discuss with because we are at the end of the uh, demonstration program and uh, uh, we'll will end this program shortly so if you have any query or any kind of discussion uh, you may ask now okay uh, so we are at the end of this one day national workshop program um thank you animesh thank you for your presentation and uh, i hope uh, this session has been enjoyed by the um, participants so uh, this uh, google earth indian uh, with this web based platform is uh, uh, very uh, has been very popular uh, for among the researchers and the students because uh, unlike the conventional softwares what we are using um these softwares has several limitations like uh, it's very um, very difficult to uh, use uh, lots of data um that's uh, for example if you use spot spot widget three consecutive bands uh, for each month so for a single year you will have um 36 uh, 36 uh, 3 into um yes uh, 36 bands for a single year and uh, for drought related studies um, you need to explore the uh, condition of vegetation for a longer period of time so you need uh, the data set for at least uh, 12 to 15 years at least uh, otherwise you cannot uh, normalize the data set and you cannot identify the changes over the period so this kind of an um, analysis uh, with uh, huge sets of data uh, it, it it's not possible uh, uh, and uh, uh, if it is possible again there is a problem because the manual error can happen so that's why this kind of web based platforms are getting popularity because uh, you can uh, use the codes codes are available online or uh, you can uh, download it you can manipulate it um, uh, you can edit as per your requirement um so we can use this uh, web based platform for our uh, future studies and uh, for uh, uh, not only for drought analysis you can use for different purposes so the participants uh, present online present online right now if you are working uh, working for your projects for your uh, doctoral thesis you can use this tool for uh, analyzing uh, huge sets of satellite data um, uh, by using this web based platform so lastly i would like to thank uh, the authority of bidyashagar university for uh, permitting us uh, to broadcast this uh, workshop uh, through youtube and uh, i must thank uh, all the um, um, all the um, research scholars uh, who, who have um, helped help us for organizing this uh, one day national workshop online um, thank you and also i must thanks the participants for your uh, uh participation and uh, your uh, i i think uh, your presence is uh, was our was our encouragement uh, we we are really happy to have uh, this uh, such kind of huge participation in this program and um, okay uh, then we can leave this program now thank you thank you all